Hey, Jeff. Hey, Eric. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? Doing well, thank you. You know, for two guys who have lived in New York City where you don't need a car, uh, we've been here for the last 12 years, no car. No car. We sure have been in a lot of automobiles for the last month. You know? That's a very cool brag. Yeah. That's like, you know, no big deal. We've Just been in a lot of... A lot of cars. A lot of Corollas. Yeah, you know. A lot of Civics. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of Hyundai Elantras. We were in a... Uh, that's Dodge, about the that's about the extent of my car knowledge, by the Dodge way. Dodge Ram. Dodge Ram Dodge is a good Ram. one. Woo. We were in uh, a lot of Ubers down in Atlanta. Nissan Sentra. You get into a lot of conversations with the Uber drivers. And, Mercury Cougar. You know, we we were like we're down Ford here for the Taurus. For the this is great. This is great <laughs> podcasting, Jeff. Wait, sorry. Uh, wait, Ford Escort. Great. <laughs> Fuck it. Keep going. Uh, I'm trying to think of more cars. This is. Fantastic Mustang conversation. Go ahead. Dodge Pl- Plymouth. Dodge Plymouth. All right. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying this because I am. No one else is. I think that people will. All it, right, keep going. All right, press two if you enjoy what's happening here. See, you knew it. You didn't no, even do a sound effect for it. Anyway. No, no, I was trying to think of another car. We're down. In, it's pathetic. <laughs> it's really pathetic. We were down in Atlanta. We took a lot of Ubers down there. And you meet all these Uber drivers. We happen to, you know, be engaged in their stories, interested in who they are as people. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, well, what are you guys down here for? We say the Red Bull Music Festival. And they say, what do you guys do? We could say a lot of things. And the easiest answer is to say we have a podcast because people get that now, you know, this day and age. They're like, wow, you know, you have all these people over your house and you talk for an hour and a half. What does it sound like? We're like, it sort of sounds like this. Yeah. So, Just like this. So uh, we're a good time in a car. We actually. Yeah. Volkswagen uh, Jetta, by the way. We That's went, another one. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was the uh, number two. Yeah, Volkswagen Passat. We went to our friends Bob and Gina's wedding, which is down outside of Philadelphia, and we rented a zip car up here, and we rode down with our brother Dan mm-hmm. and our friends Shinsuke and Kat, mm-hmm. and that was in a uh, Infinity Q. Yep, keep going. Fifty. Yeah, yes. way to be, Jeff. Yeah. Okay, so we took an Infinity Q50 down there. I'm a big car guy. And the way it works is I drive, mm-hmm. Jeff does the navigation, and he also handles all the playlists. Mm-hmm. And, you know... I'm you, killing it. You are killing it. You're yeah. going to get you're gonna get a lot of rap. You're going to get some, like, you know, old, like, rock tunes. It's a big... Old rock tunes? Yeah. You, you know, sound like an old rock tune when you say stuff like that. 80s... Uh, rock old and roll rock tune. No, you were playing like the outfield, and you were playing. Well, that was, yeah, that was when that's I an old rock stuff. tune. That's... Think about our audience, Jeff. All the nineteen-year-olds who listen to this long-form podcast, and they're like, "What is the outfield?" You sound like a Time Life commercial. <laughs> All these old rock tunes. So, and you do, you play them, mm-hmm. and so uh, in the middle of this, Cat was curious. She said, "Hey." What kind of music do you think the band is going to play? Now, Bob and Gina mm-hmm. are both Italian. Mm-hmm. Um, they have big Italian families. We grew up in Harrison, which is a big Italian town. Mm-hmm. We I mean, lo- it's a small Italian town. Right, but, but it, it is, is filled. Big, it's big on Italians. Yeah, with, with Italians and Italian culture, and we are very Italian. Yeah. So, and then there are a couple of Jews in there. Yeah, myself, yourself, yep. Dan. So we, uh, we were like, well, they're going to play Italian music like, uh, well, you know what? Like Dominic the Donkey. And Cat goes, what is that? And by the way, that was like basically the record stopping. Yeah. As in you pressed stop on your Spotify and you pulled up Dominic the Donkey. Now, nobody here is going to know what Dominic the Donkey is. It sounds a little something like this. Oh, we're dropping it in? Chingity ching. Eon, eon, it's Dominic the Donkey. Chingity ching. Eon, eon, the Italian Christmas donkey. La, 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 la. Now you have to imagine, by the way. Dan, Shinsuke, Jeff, and myself, exactly like Wayne's World, yeah, cruising down 95, like bobbing our heads. Doing the whole thing. Singing our hearts out. Our Italian hearts to, out. <laughs> to this just amazing I mean, song. I mean, it's a classic uh, Do you Italian... know when it's from? The 50s? Yeah, definitely. Definitely the 50s. And it's, it's it's a real recording. Like it, you can find it absolutely on anywhere. And, it, you know, and the only reason that we didn't drop in the actual recording here is because... <laughs> Uh, YouTube takes it down. You can't get paid off of. Oh, and we are not about that. No, you so, can't get paid if you if you drop in the actual recording. But it's a good time whenever we go in a car, you know, with ourselves, with other people. And it got me to thinking, Jeff. Mm-hmm. What would you think if we put together 
a cross-country trip and picked up people, fans, not just random strangers, for portions of the time, got it sponsored, and made it into a big sort of like, maybe we, maybe we interview them. I don't know. I'm just thinking off the top of my head right now. Okay, so you want to get murdered. I do not know. that. It, well, okay. It depends because that'd be a good ending, right? Dead podcasters get better promotion. This is true, and it's you know it's very compelling. It would be so compelling <laughs> to pick up strangers on the road, no, but they're, and they're drop strangers, them off somewhere else. Strangers to a point, right? This is like Mike Posner's Walk Across America. And did he survive? You drop people off like thirty miles down the road, and you say, "Figure your own way back." Well, no, well, we're gonna of. keep going. Uh, you know what? There's no bad ideas. I'm yeah. being very vulnerable right now. Oh yeah, I I think that you're you could be more vulnerable when you're <laughs> sitting in the front seat driving a car and someone pulls out a knife on you. But I, that that'd be that'd be you. You'd I, be sitting in the front. Oh, I thought you said I was gonna pull out and you might knife. have the knife on you. If if we're inviting strangers into our car, I'm 100% bringing a knife. But are these I don't strangers? have a knife, but maybe we can get sponsored by a knife company. Well, that's what, that's what I'm curious about. Mm-hmm. Can we do this with a sponsor? Yes. And which sponsor would you like to have? What makes the most sense right now for a cross-country trip mm-hmm. where we have conversations, record them? Mm-hmm. Maybe you say an auto dealer. Maybe you say... Oh, like a like Long Island Toyota, home yeah. of the lowest rates on the... Toyota Corolla. Yeah, but uh, when you when you do that commercial for real for Long Island Toyota, let I let me hope tell you about Lenny's Toyota Emporium out in Hempstead, Long Island. This is a diff- this is a different dealership. What happened to Long Island Toyota? Long Island Toyota out in well, okay. Hempstead, Long Island. What is the ideal sponsor for this, Jeff? I I think we just came up with it. <laughs> All right, so this fictional place, uh, I hope they pay us Lenny's to make this happen, to drive cross country mm-hmm. and uh, record that process. Get, I think we could get sponsored by like OPEC. OPEC? <laughs> I think so. Any other ideas? <laughs> okay, so wait. So, so far the list is L- Lenny's. Is OPEC on your mind because we went to the Jimmy Carter Presidential Museum and Library down in Atlanta, Georgia? Well, I was thinking like maybe who they would, could sponsor who would, us. Yeah. <laughs> Who would pay for us to go across the country and spend a lot of money on gas? The sheiks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, peck. That'd be kind of fun. I wonder if we could do it. Maybe we do it with just like rappers. Rapper? What rappers are you going to pick up in Topeka, Kansas? I, I don't know who's out there. Sorry. I mean, we don't have to drive through Topeka, Kansas. Yeah, maybe we don't. What, what rappers are you going to pick? Actually, you want to know what? I bet there's more rappers, Jeff. I bet the rappers could sponsor us. I bet all the rappers would pay us to go and pick them up so this that they could be on the platform. This is such a better idea than having to repost <laughs> things on like SoundCloud for 30 bucks. <laughs> we could do this and interview this unlistenable product. That would be great. That would be great. That probably would do a lot of good. So anyway, here's an idea. Yeah. Just put it out there. Thought of it right now. Great idea. Very much on board. Spend time in a car. Shout out to Lenny's Toyota Porium. <laughs> Out in Hempstead, Long Island, we love your Corollas. <laughs> you know, you know one Toyota, and that's a Toyota Corolla. Jeff, who's on the podcast today? DJ Toomp, the legendary DJ Toomp. We not only interviewed him in Atlanta, but we interviewed him at Mean Street Studios, which is home to DJ Drama and Don Cannon. Well, they don't live there, but they, they work there. It is their it it's is their, their nine studio. to five, and so it's not a surprise when. In the middle of the interview, DJ, DJ Drama, Drama shows by. up. Yeah. That, that was great. And it's cool because he has a history with Toomp. Mm-hmm. Toomp is a veteran producer who, God, I mean, if you don't know him, you should listen Read anyway. Read a book. Yeah. Read a book. <laughs> DJ Toomp has worked with everybody from TI. I mean, he's responsible for launching TI's career. Executive produced his first four albums. I mean, the biggest record he ever did was one of the biggest records in hip hop ever. What you know. Yeah. He worked on graduation with Kanye. He worked with Jeezy. He worked with Pitbull. He worked with Jay. Jay Z. Oh, right. On the American Gangster Project. Pitbull. I said Pitbull. Oh, did you? But but it is worth saying twice. Toyota he, Corolla. He, <laughs> DJ Toomp even worked with Uncle Luke. I mean, this guy has gone back in hip hop history and is a big part of it. And it was an honor for us to sit down with him. He's funny. He's got lots of history. And he's on the podcast today. Jeff, when do you want to get into it? Right after I tell people to go rate, review, subscribe, all those things. I know you're listening to this on whatever you're listening to it on. Yeah. You know, you're you're on your uh, your Spotify. You're on your Google. Maybe you're on your Zune. You're on your Zune. Yeah. In your Toyota Corolla. 
<laughs> Take a second and just hit that subscribe button. Yeah. And Sma- wait, why don't you smash that subscribe button? That's if you're really real. Then you're going to smash the you subscribe smash button. it right now. Jeff, what do you want to get into it? Right now. Yo, what up? It's Eric, a.k.a. Hugging the Block, a.k.a. 15-yard penalty, first down. Yo, what up? It's Jeff, a.k.a. the Don Dada of Don Diva, a.k.a. the Shice Buzz of the Salsa Club. <laughs> Man, yo, what's up? It's ATLP Bang of the Southern Hip Hop God, DJ Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your third favorite podcast to waste time with it's the real. What's happening, man? I'm here, man. Chilling, man. It's so good to see you. We saw you last week at this amazing trap roundtable that you did with Zaytoven, Shody and Red. Shody Red, and Mike Will. Famous Mike Will. And you know what? It was fascinating to us because you guys are all from different generations, right? And it was awesome because our friend Yo, who was hosting it, okay. started it off and said, where did you guys all meet? And everybody had a story about each other. Yeah. It wasn't like this really random thing. It wasn't like you guys had never met before. This right. was like, there is a real lineage in this town. Yeah. And you could see that literally on stage and you could hear that in your music. And it was awesome Yo. for us to sit in the audience and hear. Yo. How was it for you up on there on that stage? I covered a, the whole T.I. situation. Mike Will... He covers Future and a few others. And you got Shorty Red, you know, you can attach him to Jeezy. Jeezy, yeah. And you got Zaytoven, and you can attach him to Gucci. Um, Gucci. Yeah. So we got the, the the trap gods in there as far as the producers and the artists. You know, producers that's responsible for those artists. For sure. So, yeah, man, it was, it was great, you know. And then um, all organic, man, the way we met and just the way we vibe every time we see each other. It's always that type of energy. So in our couple of weeks down here, we found that, like, Atlanta has a lot of people who have lived here for a while. Yeah. But there's so many more who have moved down there and made it, you know, their home. Yeah, and made it happen. Where are you originally from? Man, Southwest ATA. Yeah. When you're growing up and your dad's in a band, mm-hmm. what was that like in terms of like the music world around here? Oh, back in the 70s? Yeah. It was crazy. Only thing we were missing were labels. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. We would have been popping just as well as New York and LA back in the 80s if we had Warner or all those big labels down here. You know what I mean? What was down here? You got to think. We had um, Curtis Mayfield. Hamilton Bohannon, Gene Korn, speak of Georgia, James Brown, mm-hmm. um, Millie Jackson, Cameo, SOS Band. Mm-hmm. We can go yeah. on, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you got to think SOS was one of the first groups really, you know, jamming, Jimmy Jam and Lewis produced them, and that was like 808 driven. Yeah. So if you think about it, you know, they were rocking the 808 back in 82. And you see the lineage well, Here go we go, through. coming back around rocking the 808 sound. Would you go to your dad's gigs, like, in town? Um, I was too young. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my dad, he was signed to, um, what was that? Not Kurtom Records, it was Buddha Records, which yeah. was the big distributor of Kurtom and a few other labels. And I think Curtis Mayfield still had some type of relationship with them because when he was with the Impressions, they were on Buddha Records. Mm-hmm. So Buddha, and you got to think back in the 70s and um, up until, you know, um, it got to a point where they diminished all the distributors in each region you know you had big state and all these uh swatch brothers and all those different distributors but before then you just had might have a label like a buddha records that was distributing other small labels yeah you know and um my um dad his group my dad was in a group called the mvps Mm -hmm. and they were managed by a baseball player named don clendon oh crazy yeah former met yeah 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 exactly so um I mean, I got a gang of pictures and stuff at the house with them gather around him because, you know, he was, that was his group. You Crazy. Know what I mean? Yeah. It's, Where would the MVPs tour around? Man, around the Southeast. Mm-hmm. We had a, saw, they had um, a big single called Turning My Heart Beat Up. It's okay. still on uh, face, on YouTube, too. I right mean, on. I pull it up sometime. Man, yeah. Just to, you you know, don't file copyright claims? <laughs> nah, man. You know what I mean? Because it was so much paperwork my dad and them really didn't know about back then. Man, oh, they man. were just a dope group. You know, they would sing on the corners or whatnot, and they end up getting a deal, you know? Yeah. But um, I, I got a few reels of some of the... Um, like, you know, quarter-inch reels of some of the performances. Or so, musical household. Mm-hmm. How big was your family? Uh, let me see. Me, my sister, and my dad, and my mom. Then I have two half-brothers. Mm-hmm. But growing up, it was ma- mostly me and my sister, man. Yeah. We'll go to Peaches Records and Tapes on Friday and Saturday and just buy 45s. And we may buy our album and just play records until we fall asleep on the floor. Man. Oh, man. You know what I mean? What's the age difference between you and your sister? She's five years older. Right on. Matter of fact, that's who gave me the name. Toom- she used to call me Toompy. When really? I was about two or three years old. So, I just, it's a been a family name. Yeah, it's a nickname that will never leave. Wow. Teachers in high school, everybody just started calling me Toon. <laughs> and when I got a DJ, and I had all kinds of wild ass DJ names DJ uh, Special D, 
DJ Tad Ski, DJ um, Spin Master T. Yo, that's, just, that's yeah, such just, a like man, specific time. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Because it then it got to the point where people were like, oh, you know, we saw the flyer, we just didn't know it was you. Yeah. And then I noticed how much money I was missing out on and how many people wasn't showing up. I'm like, you know what? Let me go on and just rock with Toon. Yeah. So that's where everybody know me for. So just DJ Toon, man. Boom, it's been stuck. When did you first start, like, actually you getting into music? Uh, Well, I started DJing around, like, 82. You know what I mean? It's an older guy named J, uh, J.D. Whitaker, where he rests P, Jelly Dog. And um, my homeboy, Gerald, who I used to hang with, that's his dad. And he's like, man, you know, my dad, DJ. But back, you know, his dad was just, you know, he had the mixer, but he was just playing one song to the other. There wasn't no mixing going on. You know, yeah. it was just fade from one song. <laughs> but when I first heard... um. On the Wheels of Steel with Grandmaster Flash mm. is when I really started paying attention and my ears just tuned into. I was like, okay, I heard this. Foo, 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 foo. Like, how the hell is he making that sound? And when I saw it on 60 Minutes, uh, they were talking about the um, the movie Wild Style. Mm -hmm. And they showed some footage and Grandmaster Flash had his turntable set up in his kitchen. And when I saw him moving that record back and forth, I was like, oh, that's where that little foo -foo 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 -foo, that's where that shit come from. Yeah. Man, I locked in on it. I honed in. And next thing you know, man, I started getting into DJing. So that got me into music at the same time because I started learning about, you know, the art of mixing at such a very early age. You know what I mean? But it sounded like a gun just fell. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I came in here with the heat. I didn't go yeah. on. It said a he good, heavy headphone. Yeah. Um... At that point, man, I, I started learning about, you know, the intro of a record and the breakdown is when you, you know, mix the next record in. You don't want to have two vocals going and, you know, just the art of mixing. And that's when I started learning about the structure of songs. And I was like, you know what? I know the beats. I know what kind of beats to mix together. Let me, one day when I get in the studio, I'm going to mess around and try to see what I could do. And I always had a great ear because I was singing as a kid. You know what I mean? My dad taught me how to sing. You know, if you want to get in the music business in the 70s, Either you had to be a musician, yep. you had to sing or dance. Yeah, it wasn't no yeah. rapping, DJing, or right, producing. Right, 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 right. It was production, but it wasn't no electronic production. Yeah. You know, to be a producer, you have to know how to play an instrument. Mm -hmm. So it but was But you only... also had to have, like, four other guys who wore matching outfits. <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> matching stuff like that. <laughs> and let's not forget the glitter. Yeah. <laughs> So, so like melodies, harmonies, like you're good on that. Yeah. But you get this interest in hip hop, right? right. Yeah. Does it feel like forever away? Like that's it starts in New York, right? Yeah. So you're watching it on TV, or you hear it. Like who brings hip hop into your life? Your sister? Man, uh, my cousin Tanya. She's from New York, and um, she used to uh, talk about you know Grandmaster Flash and them because uh, that's around like. When it really got popular, she was saying, like, you know, they used to plug their turntables up in the park. She was basically painting the whole scene out to me, man. And once I started seeing it on these, you know, the footage, I was like, damn, she wasn't lying at all. But did it feel, you like, know? rebellious considering, like, the type of music that your parents were on? You know, um, at first, but the thing about it is when hip-hop really really came into play and really started becoming popular, it came in in a real friendly fashion because right. they came in using good times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, uh, uh, an R&B hit. Sure. Yeah, instead of just coming with some brand new, totally different thing, you know, just beats or whatever. So the fact that they came in rapping over, you know, and and same thing with uh, Treacherous 3, it was rapping over Heartbeat, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And you're talking about Enjoy Records and Sugar Hill Records, which they had bands really replaying all those records. It right. wasn't sampling or anything back then. So it was accepted, but uh, our parents were like, oh, that's not real music. But <laughs> at the same time, um, when you do your history, man, you got a lot of people say that a lot of uh, hip-hop started in New York. Mm -hmm. But they say a lot of rap started in the South when you do yeah, your no, history. Yeah, no, we have, we have a great friend, um, Law Parker, who works at Rock Nation, yeah. who manages people like Jay Electronica and people like that, yeah. who really, truly, and factually believes that hip-hop started in his yeah, native man. New Orleans, Louisiana. Yeah, and yeah, down here in the, just the South, period, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm willing to sit on any panel or that. And, mm -hmm. yeah, I can school some New York people on their own new hip hop history because I've been, I'm almost 50 years old. Yeah. And I've been studying it, you know, even before I even knew I was going to fall in love with it. It's just, it's just something that caught my ears and my eyes because I want, I, once you learn the words to rappers delight and can say it right there on beat, shit, everybody felt that they could rap at that time. Mm -hmm. I started rapping too. Um, yeah. Counterpoint, I think that it was started in New York. <laughs> yeah. I think that DJ K-Slay started it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I would definitely say hip-hop 
But then, but then, and, 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 and like I say, and I, I don't want to st- stay too much on this because this is like a little lightweight debate. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I had to really stray some guys, and I'm like, yo, man, think about most of those break beats. They were from South, from the, it was Southern Records. When you think of the meters and mm. James, James Brown, Brown yep, yeah, Kobe sure, drama and all yeah. that shit, you know. You know, the oldest Redden is alone, you know, especially when you look at the state of Georgia and how much music has come out of here. But like I say, the meters, that's New Orleans. Yeah. yeah. Who haven't sampled the meters. Right. You know what I mean? But, but they, they was like on, you know, on the, um, on the plantations, a lot of slaves. They had some of the flyers raps and, you know, you see some of the, it's like people think Jeffrey Daniels and Michael Jackson invented the moonwalk. I saw some footage from the 60s, 50s, where this guy was gliding, doing the fucking moonwalk. Wow. I'm like, Wow. Mm. Nothing is new under the sun. Yeah. yeah. One thing I could say, though, I'm, I'm glad to see where we are as far as the South, because we used to get the shit in of the stick at one point. You know, yeah. you need to go down South. You need to shut your mouth. Whose house? You know. Yeah. Oh, that was Run? Man, we went through all that, man. I <laughs> yeah. was, when I was touring with Luke, we got, they got fighting with Run DMC. And when I was touring, we got fighting with Rob Bass and them. Mm. You know, staying on, um, having an hour sound check when the sound check was really 20 minutes. And next thing you know, by the time they sound check is in, and they letting people in the auditorium while we having our sound check. Yeah, yeah, yeah big fight and disrespectful. Suit, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to handle that. Yeah, Luke and them had to fight. They had to fight a few people, man. They got crazy. Yeah, they out fought there. the Supreme Court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Supreme Court just as <laughs> yeah. well. They, you know, they had to knock. You know, when the death row shit was happening with Snoop and them. So it's like we kind of we you know the whole you know South got something to say. Yep. We 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 kind of took a little lightweight beating, man, and uh. You know, in the beginning part of it. You're here, you're rocking parties, you're getting known around town as DJ Toomp. Yes, sir. How do you make your way down to Miami? I decided to take on uh, uh, this gig that was at a step show at the Atlantic, Atlanta Civic Center. And um, my homeboy, DJ Michael Webster, he let me get on the turntables. And I had this crazy routine. I used to scratch, it's time. You know, that's why when I saw it on Straight Outta Compton, I was like, hell. <laughs> I knew I wasn't the only one on this planet. If me and Dre was doing that shit, I shit might have been in sync. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Mike, and, then, and he let me on stage. And this is a big college event at a huge um, uh, venue, Civic Center. You know, they're changing that into something totally different right now. It's gone. And while I'm up here scratching and Everybody's looking like, wow, who's this little young dude on the turntable showing his ass? MC Shadi was there. Mm. And he was like, hey, man, I heard about you because I've been you know, in a lot of DJ battles and whatnot. He was like, yo, you want to go on tour? He's like, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there like, damn, I actually played this dude records. He asked me to come out on tour. And, you know, I used to be fascinated, you know, backstage, you know, on the Fresh Festival. I see LL and Houdini and them get off these big tour buses and. One day they let us on the bus. We saw the beds on there. I never knew tour buses was that fly. Mm. You know, we talking about 19, what, uh, 84. And um, I, I was still a senior in high school. So Shadi was like, yo, you know, you know, here's the whole schedule. And it was like, man, basically being on the road for about a month. And I was like, yo, I went home. I was like, hey, mom, can I go on tour? Can I get a tutor? <laughs> she was like, and Shadi was like, no, we can't afford no tutor, man. We'll just wait till you graduate. So it was like about four months, man, for me to uh, graduate. Cause since I was doing the college party, he thought I was out of school. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know what I mean. And um, man, next thing you know, the first show I do was do with Shadi was in San Jose, California. So I'd never flown, been on an airplane or nothing before. Never had been to Cali. So fresh kid, man, eighteen years old, fresh out of high school, man. And um, what was that like? Did you dress up for the plane like it was like a special <laughs> thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> man. I think I had a Lecoq sports eve warm up. Yeah, yeah. I started co- collecting those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, fresh and Prince made me really. Yeah, I, I was like the flyest warm up suits back then. So you show up in San Jose, and are you ready? Man, I was ready because I already had a crazy DJ routine, and um, me and Shadi, we had practice at his mom's house out there in Decatur. And so once we put all, you know, had the whole show together, me, him, um, I got Mike Fresh, and then he had his protégés on stage or whatnot. And, um, yeah, man, I did I did great, you know. How much did you and get cause, paid for that tour? Well, because well, I used to tour with another artist when I was in high school named Raheem The Dream. Oh, yeah. So I produced this stuff, too. So that was my first time actually producing a record, and that was in 85, 86, you know, someone called Raheem The Dream. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. After him. But we was touring around Georgia and Florida, so I had experience as far as, Performing in front of a crowd, you know, that was no problem. Yeah. No butterflies or nothing. How much did you get paid for that? Ooh, I was getting, uh, well, with Raheem, I think I was only getting 100 a show. But when I got with Shadi, we started getting like four or 500 a show. Ooh. 
Yeah, it started going up. So your parents didn't have like problems with you like not going to college or Nah, man. Uh you know what? They 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 they, they were they were wondering what I was going to do because it got to the point where even though cuz I had been working for myself since what 7th 8th grade. So I was DJing parties, cutting hair, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. selling candy, and I was selling mixtapes, you mm. know, 60 minutes, $5, uh 90 minutes, $10. So I was just hustling so i was making about two or three hundred a week wow from parties to you know mixtapes like i say just working for myself so by the time i got um 11th or 12th grade man i didn't even take the sat and nothing i already had my mind made up you know i was like i used to hang out at the au center you know get some girls or whatnot mm-hmm. yeah you know having a little fly 300 zx yeah up, 280 zx yeah back then. it's like being a college but not yeah, being a college yeah yeah out, yeah you know? yeah and um Back in the days, man, you used to be able to make a straight tour through the whole AU Center mm-hmm. to where the streets wasn't closed off, and that was just the thing. If you want to go on a – just go riding, go through the AU Center. And, hey, man, I used to just hang around down there, but I was like, oh, I don't want to live this college life. I want to get into this music scene. I want to get on the tour bus. I want to see the world. So, And so that really did bring you down to Miami, Florida. Yes, and I went to Miami. But what's crazy, when I got with Shadi, like I say, we, 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 we hit all these shows, and finally he was like, yo, man, we're going to go to Miami and work on the album. So around this time, I'm learning the SB 1200, mm. and um, we went to Miami, man, and that's when I met Luke, Two Live Crew, everybody. I'm seeing all this stuff on the album cover, and it was exactly <laughs> the whole lifestyle. Yeah. Did you meet them before the album had come out? You know what? Yes, I did, because a DJ battle that uh, I had won, me and my little crew, the ATL crew, it was uh, Two Live Crew were performing at the same Civic Center, mm-hmm. and um, Mr. Mix the DJ slash producer of Two Live, he said he had heard about me, you know, up here or whatnot. And um and Luke and them, they was like, yo, is that the same guy, you know, that Shadi was talking about? And, and everything just it was so organic, man. And when I came down with Shadi, they were like, damn, that's the same dude who was in the DJ battle. You know what I mean? But they didn't know I really produced at the time. They thought I was strictly a DJ. So yeah, man, it was like it, it was they embraced me, man. I was the youngest one out there. You know what I mean? And um it was love, definitely. Yeah. What yeah. was the percentage of ideas that you brought to the table as opposed to things that you like learned from those guys in their production down there? Oh, uh, what would I say? I brought, um, you know, a lot of people were really just sampling. I started actually playing, you know what I mean? Uh, really started, you know, because everybody else was just strictly drum machine driven. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, yo, I'm going to start putting some keyboards in this stuff because I, I was still fascinated with Egyptian Lover, oh, and yeah. Tony, and you know, just a lot of R and B stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? So it wasn't I learned the S B twelve hundred, learning the drum machine was one thing, but I was like, I still wanna play. I don't wanna just sample. Yeah. You know? And then next thing you know, I started hearing on uh, the West Coast when Dr. Dre and them was using all those synths. I'm like, I told you. <laughs> I told y'all we just can't keep sampling these records. We got to start playing this shit. Were they ready for what you brought to the table? Or were they just like, uh, yo, we got this certain degree. tempo, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, because yeah. that tempo, it still didn't really let up. But I was still, I still had all my little beats saved on floppy just in, when the game shifted and I was ready. But yeah, that, that Miami scene, I learned a lot. Um, I knew the SB1200, but I started learning more about bass and filtering with uh Beatmaster Clay D, DJ Magic Mike, you know what I mean? Magic Mike out of Orlando, but he moved, to, he was producing stuff with Clay D. I learned a lot from all those cats, man. Then I took that flavor and some of the bass and brought it back to Atlanta around like 90, 91. In that time, was it common to like take a record and then go out to a club and like listen to it there just to see how the people would react? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and one thing about it, in, in, in Miami, it was so many independent guys with pressing plants right in their basements. You know what I mean? A lot of Jamaican guys and a lot of the just Bohemian people, everybody just had pressing plants was like the biggest thing, you know? So you um, really could do it right away. Yeah, right away. Or, and but then later on, but after, with it, so you have like a, a Luke record or a Shadi record just with nothing, just black with no label. And they'll play it right then. Yeah, we would get feedback and see, but Luke had a club called the Pack Jam, which was a little, pirate radio station running out of there too so he had everything and he was shipping his records out of there so a ups truck might pull up at pack jam like every other hour yeah just different shipments going <laughs> to different places you know um we was in there working sometime we'd be like okay you know we just learned um the shipping number or uh, package <laughs> number on each album okay that's the one love album that's shoddy album that's two live crew that's anquiet yeah you know what i mean yeah xrl double o i forgot i know i was by heart <laughs> yeah yeah correct album but it's so much, um, 
I saw at an early age, just even watching Luke run a whole record company, you know, independent, going gold and platinum with no major distribution. Did you feel like you were a part of something real special? Hell yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Well, we actually watched it go down, you know, like you shipping records out. We sitting in the mastering lab watching it go down at um what it what is Hit Factory now, but it used to be called uh Mike Fuller. Fuller Sounds is what the name of it was. Man. So you'll see those credits on a lot of records from the eighties, Fuller Sounds Master. So how does the New Jack City album come to like your guys doorstep? Hmm, interesting. I think uh when they put that album together and that came out on Giant Records, I think they might have felt kind of guilty, you know, having a song, you know. Um, I mean, an, an album with no Southern people knowing that, you know, <laughs> you know, that it was some Southern flavor because you got to think, you know, Color Me Bad and yeah. everybody else, you know, and, and uh, yeah, we were basically the only Southern people on that. So they came to the two live crew and everybody was just brainstorming, trying to figure it out, you know. Um, but we knew that we wanted to use something from Scarface, which a lot of, you know, the movie Scarface sure. was based out of Miami slash mm-hmm. Cuba. And I was uh, on the SP twelve hundred once again, and um, and I had this producer Mike Fresh. You know, he was around because I learned a lot from him. But on this one, I think I had my uh, my shit together a little bit more than <laughs> everybody else because I went in there. I was on Mister Mix drum machine actually, and I was going through his records, and I sampled the Neville Brothers. Mm. Do, 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 do. So everybody was trying to make this beat, and like, cause we already knew, like, they got in contact with Luke, like, hey, we need a song from you guys. For the New Jack City soundtrack, so my beat, and that's what Marquise and Kid Ice was like. Hey man, we like that. You know, we're gonna put a few sound effects in it, and that's gonna go along with the story. And next thing you know, man, you know, it was like, hey, you know, you made the album. You know, that was your beat. Yeah, it was my beat. But you didn't get credit for it. I got robbed on my credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah because it was a crew, and that's um, I can speak to these guys now. But Mike Fresh. And my man, uh, Rodney Terry, was part of the Ghost Town DJs. We had a crew called the ODS. And, yeah, I made this actual beat. and But I ended up having to come back to Atlanta for something. I think it was a family situation. And while all that was going down, I missed out on the paperwork. I even missed out. Uh, my credits wasn't even on there. So Damn. I went to see the New Jack City movie. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to see my shit on the screen for the first time. Man, that shit went up and just said, produced by ODS, Rodney Terry and Mike Fresh. No DJ tune. I said, God. And it hurts because I physically did that beat. It'd be different if I just came in and, you know what I mean? Yeah. And through the snow, I created that track. So, you know, I was a little salty for a That's bit. dirty. But that, yeah. But that, 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 that's what sent me to school. And um, talking to Mike, Magic Mike, because he was rich by that time and then, um, had um, got all his publishing and everything that he was supposed to get. But he got jerked the first time, too, in the, at the beginning. But... um. That's when he was like, yo, man, you know, start reading up on these books and learn about your publishing. Because with what I, how I missed out on New Jack City is that I only got about twenty five hundred. And that was just a producer fee. Yeah. But I didn't know that I was signing to work for hire when I did that shit. So Damn. that take that's, you know, that's all on Aldrin Davis. That's tomb. You know what I mean? So man. there's nothing I could do after. To you just had to, to eat that. And, yeah, I had yep. to eat that. Ah. Yeah. So, you know college you yeah. know that was yeah. a lesson learned that was yeah. a hell of a course i learned that's a hard lesson yeah hell of a hell of a super hard that brought you back home yeah 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 i hung around there for a minute because first i started djing for poison clan so mm-hmm. I, I toured i went on a whole nother tour with them that was in uh the band in the usa tour that was uh incredible tour um nice you know hell <laughs> of an experience all over the country, man. Uh, news cameras following us everywhere. Yeah. Luke telling us, hey, man, if we see any of y'all talking to that camera, we sending your ass home. <laughs> you know, because it was yeah. at that point, it was, it was crazy. They were locking folks up. You know yeah. what I mean? It was still wild, though. You still had girls coming out the audience giving folks head on stage in front of the whole crowd. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, yeah. Crazy, man. <laughs> and what's funny, though, is how people used to look at us, man. The West Coast and the East Coast used to look at us like we were. Some savages for having these fine ass women dancing on stage with thongs, man. Oh man, y'all crazy. Yeah, 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 man. Y'all, you know, doing the women like that. I don't Next think it's the know, dancing part. <laughs> man, they just look at us like, I don't know if they were hating or what, but the next thing you know, you got BT uncut and everything. Yeah. Like seven, yeah. eight, yeah. ten years later, I'm yeah. like, man, we were way ahead of y'all. Yeah. Man, y'all, uh, new, y'all, what was it? Um, 
the Nelly video? Uh, the Nelly video. Oh, Tip Drill. Uh, yeah. Tip Drill, yeah. Uh, but the other one before that, uh, all I want to do is um, Rump Shaker. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And everybody was whole, just, oh, shit, boy, Teddy Riley. And I was like, man, look at the old move something. You know, <laughs> don't see the asses on that, bro. Like, they were blowing them out. But now, okay, now they, you know, they want to. You know, yeah. mix a lot. Yeah, that baby got back. Come yeah, on, man, they didn't want to. They didn't want us to be the first ones bringing all that shit to the. Team. By the way, just back to the New Jack idea when they were like, "Yo, we know we want something from Scarface." Years later, when Ross has the songs uh, "Push It to the Limit" mm-hmm. and like all all those things, did you ever think of like taking those? Did you look into those? You know what? Um, around that time, we we were just uh, fascinated just by the vocals and certain parts of it. You know. And say oh to my little friend yeah 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 <laughs> yeah you know just certain little i'll take you all there <laughs> you know we were, we were more fascinated by that but then like uh but yeah no nah, that's dope with the runners yeah they yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That and chopped that right shit. on yeah yeah and, um but yeah it's amazing man how that movie scarface had such an impact just on hustlers period and just the music mm-hmm. industry like yeah. everybody in the game producer dj have a poster on their wall with yeah. Al Pacino. Right? Yeah. Like that shit was a real character. Every single you know MTV I mean? Cribs episode with the rapper yeah. was like, they had, the, they had the Scarface poster. They had, right. yeah. So you come back here, what was the music scene like here for what well, you wanted to do? Well, before I got here, I kept hearing about, you know, hey man, LaFay, LA and Babyface. Yeah. Moved here and they got some shit popping. Run this like, town. Tomb, you need to get your ass back home. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, it took me a minute to catch on uh, to the wave because of uh, everybody who I heard about before I even really started hanging in Miami, like from Dallas, Austin. I remember when he was grinding with with the girl from Climax, and she he he was signed under her production company mm-hmm. to where um, I think he produced a song called Mr. DJ. Um, Joyce Irby, mm-hmm. Joyce Fenderella Irby is what her name is. And then uh, JD, you know, he was touring with Houdini on the mm-hmm. Fresh Fest. Yeah, dancing. Yeah, he was already in there too. And I think his dad had a cool little studio set up for him. And yep. JD ended up being one of the young ones to pop up out of here too. But um, when I got back, that's when I noticed like, oh, shit, you know, it's not just an independent situation. He's got distributed by Arista Records. Yeah. And... But it's a real R&B yeah. city at it's that R&B's, time, right? Yeah. It's been a hip-hop slash R&B city. But when the face came, yeah, they was focused on R&B. And it took for uh, organized noise and them to really let L.A. read know, like, hey, we got a hip-hop scene. Well, did you think that you could add something to the R&B scene? You know what? At that point, not as a producer, yeah. but as a singer, I thought I could. Is that right? Oh, yeah, definitely. But I was like, hey, I, see, I know how to sing, yeah, but I'm yeah. not just going to. I'm not. As yeah. you were saying the other day, like, yeah. you, you can rap, too. Yeah, I rap very well. Yeah, so you rap, you sing, you could produce, but, but singing well, wasn't going to take you there. I just felt that I was able to bring the beats because I still was teaching myself how to maneuver. I still don't know theory, but I can play my ass off when yeah. I feel like it. Yeah. But um, so it, I think it took for, um, then you had uh, Pebbles had her label, yep. Pebble mm-hmm. Tillman. She had PA, which was organized. Noise was producing PA and them with KP and uh, Reese. Yeah. Shout out to KP. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's when organizing them came into play. And that's when L.A. started seeing like, okay, it's more than just uh, um, Damien Dame. And he died in a car accident. And it was uh, another producer, man. What was his name? He died on a motorcycle accident. It was a few things that happened at the beginning mm. of the face time where some of the art. They, said, they had Jermaine Jackson. Wow. First. Yeah. That was wow. their first artist on the face. You're so kidding. it was definitely R and B driven. Yeah. But it took for organize and PA and them to let LA Reed know that that, that was a hip hop movement too. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so where did you fit in? I didn't fit in until later because when I first got here, it was still I still had some of that Miami bass in me. Sure. Yeah. So the first artist I got with um and really um made some noise up here was, was Lil John. I did three songs on his album, you know. Did Man. all that shit for free. And we had a nice single that came out that sent him around, you know, on tour called Shotty Freak or something. Yeah. Why did you do it for free though? Uh, wasn't really no budget there. And at the same time I knew it was very important for me to get my feet wet and let folks know I was back yeah. in the city. And I figured like, you know what? It'll all pay back, you know. It'll come back on the back end, you know. Um, yeah, but with little but John, you'd, but you'd also been like jerked before, so that's my question. <laughs> it's like, then it's just yeah. like, I guess if Let's you're see. not gonna get paid, then you might as well sign yeah. up to not get paid. I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew it wasn't no real budget there, but uh, you know, little John was like, hey man, I, get, I definitely got you. Yeah, you know, you know, put you on the album cover. Let you know, let people see that you're a part of us, and 
I started getting work, you know, based around just that one thing, you know. Yeah. Did and, you meet um, Short at that time too? You know, I met Short around that time. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, on and off, but we weren't just really around each other. Yeah. Because uh, at that time, Short was really just executive producing Lil John. Yeah, yeah. And you know, Lil John, see, was originally was a A and R for so, JD. So yeah, yeah. 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 JD was super cool. So when Lil John was trying to, you know, he brought the whole concept, but you know, this rhythm, you know, this rhythm and bass, you know, like let's mix this bass shit with some R and B, and it took off. Revolutionary. Yeah. But um, Lil John, I think it got to the point where he felt that you know he needed to you know to earn his own wings, and that's when he took off and um, short you know and you know invested in him. Yeah, believe that. What are some of the clubs that were like really popping around town at that time, where like you guys would go and it's like, yo, this is the center of it all. Oh wow! Well, it was a um, it's nowhere to be found now. Right on Marietta Street, it used to be called the Phoenix, and then they changed the Phoenix to the Warehouse, and Lil John used to have um. Chicken and beer or something. Um, he had some type of. It was a. That was the whole theme. To his like a party. theme party, yeah, yeah like yeah, a chicken yeah. and beer party, and um, like with DJ Lil John. So he was always the. He 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 was branding himself way back then. He would break his own records. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, and playing all type stuff. You know, he get on the mic, but uh, he still wasn't in artist mode at that point. You know what I mean? But um, you had the warehouse. You had five five nine, which was on uh, in the West End. You had Charles Disco. You had the night light that was on the east side. Ooh, then you had the, um oh can't leave um what's my joint on uh Bankhead. Oh man, he's with the gambling house next door. That's bad, man. I just had a brain fart. <laughs> anyway, man, it was a club on Bankhead. I cannot think of the name of it right now. And we used to go there on Sundays. Man, that's a damn shame. I can't pull the name of that. But yeah, we had about about five different clubs in rotation that we would go to. A day in the life back then for you was was what? I mean, did you have like a regular job just to Silver pay the Fox. bills? Fox. I'm sorry. That was the name of it. Silver right Fox. on. Did you have a regular day job at the time as well? Nah. Okay. Nah. So it's music, like, it's just yeah, music. till the wheels fall off. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, getting tracks placed here and there. You know yeah. what I mean? I was selling beats for like 1500 You know, some of them might come out, some of them didn't. And at the same time, too, around 90, in the, in the 90s, I also had my own label. Um, uh, My man from Miami had moved up. And my boy named Daryl Jones and me and brother Marquise from Two Live Crew, we had a little group for about a few years called Two Nasty. All right. It was like, you know, DJ Toon from the Poison Clan, Marquise from the Two Live Crew. So we ran that for a minute. And that was independent, just, just independent, like... Independent, yeah, just getting our feet wet. You know, to a certain degree, I ain't gonna lie, we... we Toured around, did a few shows. I was actually rapping then. So the same same ideas like what you picked up from Luke, where it's mm-hmm. like I could do this all in house, and I got one of the two live crew right here. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? So and uh, yeah, we made a little money, and our label did his little thing, down payment records. You know? Right on. But um, so selling beats for fifteen hundred, just like yeah, you know, to whoever came knocking on your door. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Did you, you know? go like to LaFace? Did you go to like all these different places actually, to JD or anything? Thing, well, well, I, I tried to get with um, organizing them back when yeah. the face was, stuff was popping, but my sound just wasn't polished. It, wasn't, it didn't really fit with what they were doing. Right time. on. But then I ended up getting a placement on PA's album. I didn't never never got paid for that, Rico. <laughs> <laughs> Pebbles, I never did get my check for that. It was on uh, PA's album. So that's when I kind of started getting my foot in the door. And uh, everybody over there on that side was like, okay, damn, Toomp does do more than Miami-based music. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, I'm a music guy. Yeah. Like, I can produce anybody. Your cousin mm-hmm. was friends with Tip. Is that right? Uh, No. My friend was Tip's cousin. Oh, got her. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Close, yeah, yeah you, you, you got it. That's like the Wikipedia yeah. version of the actual yeah, yeah, yeah. events. My yeah. man, too. Uh, Tremel yeah. Morgan. May he rest in peace also, man. Yeah, I've been knowing Tremel since fourth grade. Wow. And, um... And uh, we just grew up, man. We fought together, grew up in the same neighborhood. And um, as we got older, you know, we started getting a little extra money out here on the streets. And he used to always tell me, you know, every other play we make, he'd be like, man, so you're going to have to listen to my, my little cousin, man. Yo, and how often you hear that, by the way? Like, everyone's got a cousin, right? Oh, man, you hear that all the time. <laughs> come on, man. Like, man, you need to come to my church, boy. This yeah. girl can sing. Yeah. I was like, yo, it's a big difference from her singing at church. Have she ever been in the studio? No. Well, it's a big difference. Yeah. Like, that's, that's not going to work. That's if she like, can't sing better than you, yeah, then, like, yeah, it's not going to happen. better you know? than me. Yeah. But, but then you got some that sing better than me. But if they're in the church and don't have studio experience, yeah, you're talking about, like, uh, almost two years of training. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you used to just being in a big church. Like, you got to understand. A lot of people don't know, ain't not used to hearing themselves in headphones right. and whatnot. So. Right. But, yeah, man, Um, when I finally got... um. Gave my man, my man too, you know, I finally listened to his little cousin and, you know, he brought his cousin to the house. Little skinny dude walking up the driveway <laughs> with his chest out and shit. Yeah, these big... Uh, Did little, he have the wife beater on? 
You know what? He had a T-shirt. On. Okay, and uh, he, he dressed a, up for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> and he had a cassette, and uh, he played some stuff. It was him and the PSC, the rest of his squad that he yeah. rolled with to this day. Which um, they were good, but I tip just stuck out amongst the whole crew, man. And I was like, yo, you know, I hear them records, but every song he played, I hear the rest of them. I'd be like, okay. But then all of a sudden, I'd be like, ooh, who is that? Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> and so on about four songs in a row, I was like, hey, man, your boy's going to have to wait. Like, we need to focus on you. Like, yeah. You are that dude. Like, you got some slick bars and mm. your flows are incredible. It ain't just a basic flow. And then come to find out, boom, you know, he grew up in New York. He got some New York in him also. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, I was wondering where that flow came from. <laughs> and then two, he turned me on to Jay-Z. You know what I mean? I was listening to a lot of stuff, but Toot turned me on to Jay-Z, and he was like, man, Jay, talking about the shit that we do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to start hearing all that slick shit, you know, we we always wanted to get a, a 5.0 uh, range back then, <laughs> you know, with the piping or whatnot. And I guess Tip was listening to Jay-Z back then, too, just from hanging around his cousin. So his flows were there. He was just that young dude with a real mature delivery, man, and his content was dope. Like, what was Tip's vocabulary like back then? Ooh, it was dope. How many, um, many four syllable words was he using? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> he, he, he was slick with the word play, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't think he had got a whole thesaurus <laughs> uh, back then. I think, I, I think his, I think Tip's about the second time getting in trouble is when he might have had that thesaurus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Him, because he definitely came out with a mean vocabulary. When yeah. you when you yeah. look back at like Young Tip when you're first, what are the same things that like translate through to today? Is it well, like the same like confidence? Yeah, it's still that because you got to think on the song I'm Serious that Pharrell produced. Uh, the young pumpers, arrogant son of a bitch. When he <laughs> called himself that. Yeah, pumpers. yeah, yeah. A lot of people didn't know what the fuck pumpers meant. Yeah. Did he know what it meant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so like, like so he been a smart dude. Like I said, yeah. he didn't finish high school, but he's one of those guys. Like, come on, you got Jay Z. A few of them didn't finish high school. Yeah, but definitely had the, the smarts though. You yeah, know? you give him a shot, he gives you a shot. You guys start collaborating. Yeah, cause you know, I mean, I had already kind of made a name for myself. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, DJ Tump, whatever, and um, and he was about to sign with uh, my man Big Oomp, uh, who had um. DJ Unk now they put out yeah. Walk It Out. Yeah, oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. And that's um, DJ Jelly and uh, Monte and them. So he was about to sign with them. And I talked him out of it, man. Because I think he was doing little shows with them. They'll let him come on stage and bust. Because the word was out that, hey, man, it's a little young motherfucker. Wrap his ass off mm. around here. So he, um, but yeah, I, I I talked him into sticking with me, man. I was like, yo, I could take you somewhere, man. I got the music that's going to get you there. Yeah. I was like, I don't think they really got the sound for you. I got the sound, you know? Just want to take a second to acknowledge <laughs> DJ Drama. <laughs> D, 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 J, 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 Drama. Do you need the oh, studio? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you can still do them. We're not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got the goat. Yeah. No, I got lean, 100%. man. 100%. That boy looking like UFC guy yeah. around this motherfucker, man. My guy. Yo, yeah. we're getting right into that time too. That that like that early tip time right there, like seventeen year old tip coming in with that vocabulary too. By the way, mm-hmm. drama. Like, what'd you know about Toomp when he came back to town? This is after his like Miami like Luke stuff. Yeah. When he's back here, this is like after him working with like John and them, mm-hmm. and this is like LaFace's town, yep. and he links up with a young Ti. Right. What'd you know about Toomp back then? Well, I mean, I knew just that like Toomp had already like had made his mark and was a hit maker and had um had success in the past mm-hmm. um past meaning like early 2000s when I first you know met Tip and and uh Jeter and everybody mm-hmm. and then you know when they were working on that early sound and like Toomp was Tip's producer per se like it was a it was a it was a team thing to mm-hmm. me in my mind so mm-hmm. you know when I started like to really first come around you know like and, and start to uh, see how Grand Hustle was was kind of put together, and you know who played what position. You know, mm-hmm. I had always thought that Toomp was Tip's actual DJ. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I've right. told Toomp this in the past, <laughs> right. so it's like you know because he was a DJ. You know right. what I mean? Besides a producer, so when I found out that Toomp was just producing for Tip and he wasn't his actual DJ. It kind of made me yeah. come around even more because yeah. I was like, "Oh yeah. shit, a slot's it's up, a slot uh, stepping uh, on his right. toes, a yeah. position's <laughs> open." Like, damn, yeah, Toomp's right. not on the road. Like, yeah. You know, I'm seeing yeah. KT push the, push <laughs> the replay, <laughs> and you know like, what I mean, and various people. I'm like, man, it's not Toomp doing it. 
<laughs> so it kind of like made me like you know I was I started on Walker Street, which was became mm -hmm. my studio. Yeah, it was the Grand House studio mm -hmm. at the time. I started to come around like pretty much daily in a sense, just to kind of show my face and like vibe for that slot, yeah, that spot, like to Dope. be Tips DJ. You know, and and, and Tomb had his own studio where mm -hmm. he was working from and and doing everything. So you know he. You know, when I I was still a youngster, so I still looked at him like on you know the level like whoa that's there's two <laughs> yeah yeah you know, right. in Atlanta yeah. it's like there's Jermaine there's Little John and there's two you yeah know what I'm saying? yeah so you know I was a youngster and, and it was like dope because two the the same guy that he is now he's always been yeah you oh, yeah. know he's always been very um welcome and very open arms you know for sure humble Thank you, you know what yeah I'm saying? with yes, all sir. success and he always showed me love so I, yeah. you know it's my been my guy since we first yeah. met that's yes, super dope. dope did you ever see him when he stopped by like the auc just to like hang um nah, that was, that was before. yeah that was like <laughs> before yeah. my time yeah. Like, yeah that was like eight more like 87 yeah, to yeah, got it because i got it. to the auc in like 96 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so he might have probably felt a little too old to become an old man. <laughs> right yeah, yeah. you, you gotta retire at some point. Trust me, I know. I like, made my rounds yeah, by the end. You made your rounds like you can't keep coming back. You know so, what I mean? and, and you know back like it was part, it was like a regimen back then to like if you were in the music business or if you was in the hip hop, you had to go through the AUC. Like yeah. when I was in school, I rem I mean, Outcast was on campus, like yep. you know, the Hove would come to Audrey's and sign CDs, there like you know. fifty like everybody had to come through. So, you know, it was a certain period. Like I I went to school with Mace, you know what I mean? I don't yeah. really know if it's like that as much as it was once was per se. I'm sure some of the younger guys you know, if they come to town, they'll go around because that's the demographic and mm -hmm. everything. Right. But that was that was part of the you know, it was part of the campaign yeah. when you came to Atlanta, like going yeah, through to the AUC. You know what I'm saying? Right. No, well now if you come to Atlanta, you have to come to Mean Streets. That's that's where hip hop that. sort of I'm like resonates. Yeah, exactly hey. right. Hey gang, it's Jeff here from the podcast, and that's Eric. Hey. And we have got a new deal for you. Are you talking about the Franklin Delano Roosevelt of deals? I'm talking about the exact deal that he was talking about, the new deal, where he said that everybody, there's a pot in every table and a chicken in every pot. This, this then is a fireside chat. This is my fireside. I can't walk. <laughs> That's what Because you're so shocked yeah. at how great this deal is. Wow. Jeff? Wow, what a transition. What's the deal? What is the deal? <laughs> what is my deal? We've got t-shirts for sale for Black Friday. All of our black t-shirts are now half off. Wait. 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 Yes. Are you serious? I'm so serious. I'm looking at our website and they are half off. This Friday. This Friday. Black Friday. Black Friday. Black t-shirts. Black t-shirts. Half off. Half off. It's thereal.com slash shop. And now back to DJ Toon. So you meet Tip mm -hmm. and you're just like taken by him and you see what it is. Yes, sir. So how do you guys like solidify that you're his guy? The feedback we were getting from the songs we were playing, you know, I'm talking about these just straight demos, no mix, just straight rough. And um, we had like a good five, a good five piece, you know what I mean? And every song was just flawless. Those are the records that got him in at you know Arista, um, or those are uh, at least two of those. You know what? Those are the records that got Arista's attention. Mm -hmm. But uh, some of those end up making it on mixtapes. But those records definitely got his attention, got KP's attention. Yeah, to where he felt like you know KP was the A and R at the face at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's crazy though, but my goal coming from. Florida was hey man I got to get a get my foot in the in the door at the face some kind of way as a producer or and boom I end up um getting tip signed to the face so I yeah. definitely caught the face before they closed the doors <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know it's not a, a long lasting relationship with tip over there mm -hmm. what was it like when you were actually on the label what were those meetings like they were cool but um people really they 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 didn't really accept tip too tough and uh and what what and what made it even worse is that um i'm not gonna just say worse but what made it a little bit more uncomfortable is when kp left because mm -hmm. kp was like yo you know i'm about to move on you know but little did we know that a lot of stuff was about to yeah you know, come down the pike yeah industry, man. It's a game yeah. Of musical chairs, yeah. Man. yeah yeah we didn't know that they was about to lift the needle you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. by the way in this industry usually it's just chairs yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> not yeah, even musical yeah. chairs yeah, not musical chairs <laughs> yeah. anymore so kp left so that was like really the backbone as far as support or just someone really even rah rah for you up under that you know and up under that roof and plus they way up in new york yeah and um yeah it got to the point where uh we just thought me jason the tip used to make trips up there just to see what was going on because when dope boys in the trap started taking off it really was no support from 
Arista at all. You would fly up or drive yeah, up? We drove. We drove. How'd you split the driving? Man, we, we just drove. <laughs> we drove through snow one time, me, Jason, and Tip. Yeah. We had we, we made one trip as far as getting off of the label, and we made another trip up there as far as moving around, trying to get a new deal. You go up there, and what's the conversation like when you sit oh, down man, with them? Oh, man, well, the conversation was, okay. To um, get off the label. Okay, well, the first, yeah, the first conversation was like, hey, L.A., um, we're here. We got a song popping. You know, off this I'm Serious album, Dope Boys in the Trap, it's the hottest record. You know, we're currently doing shows, like four shows a week. We want to do a new album. We see that we don't have the support, so are you going to back us and give us um, some type of budget to do this video to Dope Boys in the Trap? And they didn't. And so what we did was did our own Dope Boys in the Trap video. You know, I'm on there acting like <laughs> L.A. Reid, <laughs> Tip. You know, it's, it's, it's a concept. You could just tell that we were highly upset <laughs> yeah. how things were going. And uh, we played the video for L.A. He saw it and was just like, okay. And he's like, yo, I'll be right back, man. I'm going to holler at y'all later. And my the whole thing was like, hey, man, are you going to give us, give us, you know, give us a, a nice chunk of money to stay at this label or you got to let us go? Yeah. And um, Mark Pitts was there. Wow. And Mark came and was like, yo, you know, so what's up, fellas? We were like, shoot, you know, we just wait for L.A. to come back. He was like, oh, L.A. been left. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, oh, shit. And that's when we were like, hey, man, it's time to get off this shit. Yo. And they, <laughs> we, we, they end up telling Tip, hey, man, you know, we'll let you go, you know. You know what? Out of all that, that is pretty decent that they just, like, let you go, yeah, right? Yeah, like, go. Yeah, and yeah. But is so, it true that L.A. didn't know what the trap was? He didn't. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he was just like, oh, dope boys in a trap. What is that? You know, I want me to, you know give you a budget for this video and because you know the album didn't do didn't do too good you know what i mean it was a dope album it's still like it's, it's kind of like tips reasonable doubt yeah. you know first album and mm -hmm. it's and lyrically i mean production the shit was dope but it just didn't get that regular back and that everybody else had gotten from the face you guys at this point believe in the product you see oh, what it's doing man. in real life yes, how do you go back up to new york again and get a new record deal well that's what he's um Went up there, uh, had a drove little... another twenty four hours. <laughs> hey, man, he got up there and started talking to. Uh, that's when uh, Tina Davis was at Def Jam. Mm. That's when Mel Winter was at a Universal. Uh, we mm. went to Sony. That's when it was Donny Einer and all them. And KP was at Sony around this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He left and uh, him and Shanti was there. Yep. And um, yeah, we getting all these different, you know. So you sat down in all those buildings. Yeah, sat down in all of them, and um, decided to do, you know, with Craig and uh, Mike Carey. What separates Atlantic Records from everybody else that you just named? Well, Atlantic uh, was willing to. Okay, because well, around this time we had done hit the streets, and and got twenty fours hot. Twenty fours. That was a beat. I was. I had made. You know, I always had that beat of the day that I might let play for like six hours or more out of the day. So I made that track like 10 o'clock that morning. So around noon, Tip came over and got a haircut. So while I'm cutting his hair, he listening to this beat. And by the time I got to really the fade part, he was like, hey, man, I got something. <laughs> don't let nobody get that, man. I got a song for that, man. Like, matter of fact, don't let nobody hear that beat. He's like, who is that for? I'm like, man, I just made it. And so when he recorded to it, he got the song 24s. So we wasn't even signed, but we went and got... You know, you just use the show budget and when they got it mixed, my man Dale Ramsey, Rambro, mixed it. And um, the buzz had got so strong over that record. Plus, he was still doing shows with um, Dope Boys in the Trap. Yeah. So Atlantic, out of all the labels we s sat with, Atlantic was the only ones who felt like, hey, we want to piggyback off this single that y'all got. Uh, we are going and fund this uh, a real video for this song. And we're willing to give you more up front and just as a, you know, and we respect you as a label, you know, the whole Grand Hustle. They they, they gave the best, you know, deal out of everyone, you know. A PSC like, deal too, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, PSC yeah. also. But so the landscape at that time, you know, Def Jam is popping, I think, right? Yes, like sir. early 2000s? Oh, yeah. Who's on Atlantic with you that you were like, oh, like these guys, if they can work that oh, project, they can work Trick ours. and Trina on there at yep, the time? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Slip and Slide was still, yeah, they were still on fire yeah. as, far, as far as that. And uh, who else was on Atlantic? I mean, Fat Joe was there, like yep. Lil' Kim. But yep. that's Lil that's Kim, that's North, yep. right? Yeah. yeah. But like who, yeah, who else down South? As far as the South, yeah, the only thing was really just Slip and Slide. At yeah. That point. yeah, yeah. But, so you go in there and what do you what do you give them besides like 24s like what are you like showing them that you're like yo we got more here oh yeah I'm we, serious. Well, first of all yeah we well, yeah. we played um 
Because we had so many songs that we recorded after 24s. And then at the same time, there was a few songs on that mixtape that was just flowing that Craig and them was like, damn, what you going to do with that? And at one point, people thought Bone Crusher was our artist because Never Scared was on our mixtapes in the <laughs> streets. And we just used to be leaking these records out. We were, you know, they come to my house and hear the beat, but I didn't really have any set up at my crib to record. But they'd just come over my house and I'd just be going through beats. And we're just sitting there, like I say, just kicking it. Yeah. Smoking it and, <laughs> and cutting hair. And yeah. The whole vibe, man. All at Tomb's crib. So. Who's somebody who came over to your house to get their hair cut but didn't actually cut a record? Oh, that's a long list, but ain't nobody famous. <laughs> no. Nobody famous. Nah. So the Atlantic deal happens. Um, what are you most proud of in those early years in terms of like your production with Tip that like you were like, man, we're doing something just way different? Yeah, the fact that I got the leading single, mm -hmm. you know, and that my song played a major part in this whole shit happening and the fact that I had more to offer mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah and uh, we talking about what four more albums and I was executive producer on the first two albums yeah you know? I want to talk about King in particular okay which meant a lot to us yes sir in that time um, it meant a lot to the greater hip hop world Damn right. um, because it reshaped things you know that, mm -hmm. that King of the South thing wasn't just a like mm -hmm. a, a saying that was that was real yeah it was real and it really set him apart because sonically it was just like like a hurricane it just sort of hit you and and stayed right yeah when you were making it did you have any brush back from anybody in the building or anybody around town who was just like i don't see it and you're like no i really really believe in it no believe it or not man it wasn't any brush back because uh craig and mike um they had believed in everything we had done previous you know just from from day one from the um uh, trap music album you know what i mean um to where, if anything, it might have been like, oh, y'all could have mixed that song better or something like that. But as far as just our creative creativity, yeah. oh, man, there's never never any type of, you know, nobody ever really turned down anything. Because cause we had so many ears. You had me, Tip, Jason, and you had the PSC. We really played our shit for each other and, and had meetings where we get real feedback. Like, hey, man, it, is this song going to make it, you know? I heard, you know, labels used to, you know, I used to sit in with labels with Luke and then we used to do that. Yeah. And, um, but we really went over our shit and made sure it was dope, man. You yeah. Know, and we have a few outside sources, you know, we can get their opinion also. So we narrowed it down, you know, out of, um, out of maybe 20, 30 songs. We narrowed down, always, always narrowed down to get 12 or 14 to where it was just a thorough album. And we always, and my whole thing, just from coming from the, you know, the Bomb Squad and the, America's Most Wanted and The Chronics, just some of your dopest albums, you know, you got to take people on a journey. You know, you have this intro and then, you know, the placements of the song, There's certain songs that you, that's just going to sound better coming before or after each other. You yeah. Know? So the way that you just sequence the album, all that played a part too. So yeah, Atlantic, they believe in everything we've done, but um, to the point where they even told me like, hey, Tom, you know, we need a huge song. Cause Tip is in this ATL movie. We hmm. just need a leading record, man. Whatever you come up with, we even got something extra for you. You know, I was trying to get them to buy me a 911 Turbo. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up getting it later on with Def Jam, but um, yeah, I, I told them to, uh, yeah, they didn't. They sent me one. You said I don't want money. I want an actual car. Yeah, yeah. I wanted money too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, cause you know, other, another check had that came already that was real cool. The one I'm like, man, y'all give me a gift. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it was it was a nice little bonus I got. <laughs> But on the song that I delivered was what, what you know did. about that. Yeah. yeah. Goddamn. And, and that shit changed a lot, man. That got me a whole lot of work. That was a huge record. Yeah. I remember DJ Khaled calling me from Miami. Um, he was like, I don't know how he got my number. Like, Yo, <laughs> two, what's up, man? It was like around like 12 or 1 o'clock. He said, man, you fucking guys are out of here, man. I'm about to play this song. He was like, just hold on for a minute. Don't hang up. He put the phone down and... He's like, yo, is that new T.I., yo? <laughs> like, wow. And, 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 he, and he turned down to where you can hear the crowd. Ah! He said, boy, y'all fucking out of here. Y'all out of here, too. But I'll tell you, you got you one. And when he called me from Miami, I was like, okay. I knew it was a hot record. Yeah, but, yeah. But him, you know, making his way to find my number to tell me that and playing it. Let me hear it on the phone and the whole reaction. That's when I was like, yeah, we got something special popping off. And that song wasn't even originally for him. 
right? No. <laughs> that, that was, was crazy. That, it like went through like six different people. Well, well the track, we'll say the track. Yeah, because I mean, like it's obviously his song, yeah, right? Yeah. But like, but the, but, but the, the track actual, originally, yeah. um, who had that track first? Benzino and Birdman. Benzino and Birdman. Yeah. yeah. Doing your research. Yeah. 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 And you know, even and Jeezy they, had a shot for it, right? Jeezy was loving it, man. But that's <laughs> when he had, um, he had caught strep throat. Damn. He had to have some surgery. And um, when, but isn't every, that something, by the but way? But everyone just... who heard it, you know, uh, I would say then Eight Ball MJG had yeah. it too. It was Man. a song called Alcohol, Pussy, and Weed. And they, I, sometimes I think they kind of upset with me to this day. <laughs> I cannot get those dudes to answer my calls, <laughs> nor work with me at all. Damn. I'm talking about, yo, I see them somewhere. Yeah, it's always cool. And I'm like, man, I think they feel still feel some kind of. Way How long it. did they have the beat for? They had it for about a good month. That's on them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and the title, I was telling him, yo, man, you got to put a better song to this because <laughs> I put a lot of time in this track and I know that this shit is special. Everybody, Everywhere I play it, everybody's like, what the fuck is that? Alcohol, pussy, and weed. Yeah, alcohol, <laughs> pussy, and weed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, it's real low yeah. ceiling on that shit, you know? So um, Benzino, he, yeah, he, he hit me one time, was like, yo, him and Dave Maeve was on the phone. Yo, man, you know, man, you know, we put you in Scratch Magazine, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, man, don't make it like you put me in Scratch Magazine. Like, come on, man. They're like, man, you need to let us get that beat. I was like, no, bro, listen, man, Ti is my artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, this is that's we family. And we got a beautiful, incredible record that's about to come out any time, any minute right now. So, no, you guys can't have that track. And I never did even. Uh, I heard alcohol, pussy, and weed, but. I didn't even bother to hear what him and Birdman did, you know. I, oh, I bet know. it was classic. <laughs> I, bet, I bet it was just like lyrics. Oh, shit. Yo, yeah, yeah. yeah. genius.com. Yeah. Bars, yeah. bars, bars, bars. Like, ooh, what do you yeah. say? Like, wind yeah. it back, all that. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. that Damn, song son, comes out you find this? and changes your life. Yes, it did. Your phone must have been ringing like crazy after that. Yeah, it was crazy. It was man. all Khaled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you have people, you know, the regular thing. Hey, man, give me one of those. No. Do you think that people would call you for music and you're like, I got to go. It's got, there's an order to this. It's tip right. first. Yes. And then, you know, we'll see you on down the line. Yeah. We'll who who was second? At that time, if yeah. it wasn't tip, it would have been, hmm. I had relationships with a lot of people, but it wasn't really nobody. I was, um, cause even with the stuff that I didn't, think some it was a few tracks i didn't think tip would like but he was like hey man hold on give me that one you yeah. know what i mean so but uh it wasn't really nobody second in line yeah just benzino yeah. and then yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo so yeah. so after that song comes out shout out to both of them too, no man. totally yeah, yeah, love Bird, man. Cool, man. you guys really Bird, man. you guys must have run this city <clears throat> like yes, sir. there was no competition yes, right none your record was playing Nothing, man. I'm at, in you, every I, one of those clubs, out of every one of those ass. car stereos, and it's still the same reaction right now when he's on stage or yeah. when they when a DJ go into an old school set, man. Whenever that song drops, it's the same oh, reaction. That first note, like, yeah. where's and, the uh, first time you heard it out? Um, Club Vision, and that's when I had a chance to really see. It. And around that time, I mean, it was you know, it was the city was on fire, you know, just. Club still staying open to five in the morning. The BMF was moving around. Yeah, so yeah. just a whole lot going on. The city was on fire. We talking about before the Tyler Perry studio and all that. Yeah. yeah. The film game hadn't really took off. It was just really music when you think of Atlanta. But also in that time, you're you're working with other producers. You're executive producing, but there's like Just Blaze and and some other guys mm -hmm. a part of that. What are you looking for from what you know they can bring to the table? What do you ask of them? Well, something that could, um, I was, because I was definitely, uh, I, I could be hella, hella picky. Like, it was a few, um, it was a few songs that I heard from major producers where I was like, why you pick that one? Mm -hmm. Not saying that he's whack, but why did you pick that one? That don't really fit you. That's a decent track, but that don't fit Clifford Harris. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I always wanted something that'll take him out of his comfort zone, but still, because, I mean, he, he can adapt to any environment as far as when it comes to a track. But uh, I just wanted to, something that, that'll take him out of his comfort zone and something that didn't sound like me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just something different. And, and that's what we got. I got to think, because even when we did trap music, you know, Kanye had three songs on that album. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and that was dope, you know. Kanye learned a lot from, from being around us. He caught some of that Southern flavor. 
And at the same time, he was playing us some of his stuff. You know, like, yo, man, you know, I'm working on my album. What y'all think? And we gave him thumbs up. Like, yo, shit is hot, bro. Because at that time, I just knew Kanye as a producer. When he played some of his stuff at Patchwork, it was like before the video dropped and everything. Yeah. Like, yo, man, you on your way, you know? Wow. So he was rapping mm-hmm. without the... The mouth like impediment yeah, or whatever. Yeah, he, yeah, he like, still yeah. had it though. He was he was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> but, but it, I think it was healed by that time, but you could just yeah, you could tell he, he, he could still see it to a certain degree. Yeah, doing <laughs> my job with Tip, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um and so you knew him back then mm-hmm. and you, you know, saw his his star ascend. Yeah. But uh but you guys didn't work together until later on when yeah, he was, yeah, it was later. Yeah, when he was doing graduation. Mm-hmm. And you knew that he was coming down here to get an Atlanta type sound. Well, um, I, I found that out later because at first um, I had caught up with Ye um, where I was in New York, and me and my business partner Bernard we had missed our flight, so it was like a four hour layover. So we just went down to the studio, and uh, Kanye had his ASR. And so my man Big John from uh, EMI, John Platt, yeah, John Platt, yeah. shout out, what up, and um. He was like, yo, yeah, in the studio, man, just, you know, sit until you're playing, you know, to your flight. Just go down there and see what y'all could come up with. So I get down there, you know, yeah, he's like, oh, shit, Tomp, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, okay. And I'm like, yo, let's, let's cook up something. And so I got on the ASR, I made a dope-ass track, man. Next thing you know, that shit just went to this um, reboot. Anybody who got an ASR know, when you see that re- reboot 005 <laughs> or whatever, that means you got to start over. Shut down, yeah. Your track is gone. You can't try to hit enter. You, it's, you got to cut it off and start over. So, And a track that I spent about, what, 15 minutes on was just gone. And Ye was like, hey, man, I already know you fire, man. Just the way that you maneuver, man. Like, we need to hook up again one day. So he had got with um, Young Jeezy. I, mean, I had done a song for Jeezy um, called I Got Money. Because on that particular album, I think uh, the inspiration, I think that's what album that was. So I did uh, I Love It, which was a big record, big single off that album, leading single. And uh, another one I called uh, I Got Money, which was him and T.I. Mm. So Kanye fell in love with that record because around that time I was still, you know, using the it wasn't like a what you know, but I got into my chord progressions at yeah. that point, you know, with the horns and the synths or whatnot. And Ye fell in love with the record and was like, hell, you know, let's do a remix. And so Jeezy connected me and yay jesus was like hey tom man you know yay want to holler at you and and y'all he wanted he you know he basically was like hey man i'm gonna let you talk to him he want to do a remix to this record i don't know exactly what he's doing but <laughs> on some producer shit you might can relate so yeah <laughs> yay was like you know i want to get the drums and i got your drums and i want to do this and you add some stuff so me and him just started going back and forth email so i'll send him something else to the track and my engineer was there because I really didn't understand the whole thing of, you know, putting it, moving the waves and sending them. I, I learned later on. But um, next thing you know, um, when Kanye sent me one, uh, a folder, and I heard the, oh, and I was like, what the hell is that? I was like, who is that? He's like, oh, man, a girl, man. We just sent it through this effect. I was like, man, that shit is dope. But come to find out, Jeezy wasn't digging that. Shit. <laughs> he was like, man, he said, man, y'all going too far. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, shout out to Jeezy. That's my guy. Big shout he, out to he Jeezy. Just, yeah, yeah. He, wasn't, he wasn't really with that shit too yeah. tough. But I uh, ended up getting on the remix, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He saw the, you know, the, it, once it all came together. Mm-hmm. But um, but Ye was like, hey, man, you know, I want to get with you as far as my new album. And we came down and we started in the West End. My studio was too small, so we ended up going to Doppler, which was in Buckhead. And um, because you wanted to invite some girls over, yeah, wanted yeah, to invite yeah. more girls, yeah, some girls. There wasn't yeah. enough room in my yeah. studio for the girls to come listen. Now, that's one thing about Ye, man. He didn't have no problem having no outside ears and come, you know, get mm. a judgment on certain things. You know, what songs which should we spend time on? Which ones should we just, you know, throw in the can? Yeah, and whatnot. And um, yeah, man. So we started the album here and finished in New York. So was that was that you? Like, I, I can think of a whole bunch of songs, like, and you try to like find like you know what you bring to the table. Mm-hmm. That ride symbol, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my shit. That's yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's a ride. great signature. Thank you, man. Yeah, totally. Yeah, a few people, uh, they, they took a chunk out of me on that. The, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But you still know that top shit when you hear Hell yeah. yeah. Yo, there's yeah. so many songs. It's it's a delight for us to find ones. It's just like, oh, yeah, you worked with Pitbull. It was just yeah. like, that's a that's a great song. <laughs> yeah. It's a great song. Yeah. And um, he shouts you out. That's yeah, his, yeah, yeah. His signature is yeah. shouting out producers. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. Toom. 
Yeah. Um, yep, he damn sure did. You know, you know, it's another great song, um, Elvis Presley Boulevard. Man, I, I, th- I think that's one of the most slept on. I wholeheartedly agree. Collaborations, man. Come on. That shit was hard. Yeah. Man. You hear it out, and it's just like, that shit rumbles. Yeah, man. That's yeah, a great I, track. I really took time and really tried to... Sometimes, you know what, though? Elvis Presley, that's one of those situations where I think I went a little too far. Because sometimes I try to just go, just like when we, when I made What You Know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone was, you know, doing the snap music. Yeah, know, yeah, like, right. You know, lean right with it, rock with it. I was like, nah, I don't, I don't want to do that. Yeah. You no, know, respect to them, very successful. Totally. But yeah. I knew what I wanted for my guy. We yeah. want to, we want to bring something totally different mm-hmm. musically. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Elvis Presley, yeah, man, that's one of them songs. Where I'm like, you know what? Let me chop this joint up and let me see what happens. Ross heard that shit and fell in love with it, but I, I don't bet. think I'm, I'm trying to think where. It was a shift going on during that time when Elvis Presley came out. It was, it was either a shift or, uh, I don't know, the video wasn't bad. Right. You know, one thing I didn't like about the video is how he sold uh, you know, the girl at the pawn shop. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Was little, I was wondering how people were going to take that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. He sold a girl at the pawn I don't remember the yeah, video. Yeah, at the beginning, yeah. it was like he came up with this thick white chick you know, <laughs> and told the pawn guy, hey, man, how much? And I was like, yo, <laughs> I don't know how this video or either they gonna cut this part out or they just go put the whole blame on you and say fuck the song you know we don't like that but nah that was a big record man yeah, I'm glad you uh, I'm glad it's, to hear it's, somebody yeah. else thought oh come on dope, it still man. resonates yeah. do you have any say on how they do the cutouts or anything or like when they add the like boop boop boom you know what that's usually um Thankful a lot of rappers have great engineers on their team. Now, yeah, to where yeah. I've never really been upset with what an engineer do as far as putting their yeah, on my shit. Yeah. Even I, I even got instrumentals sometimes where I even want an engineer to be like, hey, man, yeah, take this whole session and just do your shit. Yeah. yeah. You know you know all the plug-ins and tricks, man. Right. And <laughs> do something to it. You know, to finalize it. Like, it's dope. But, yeah, and so that's how I am. I'm real open to an engineer. That's dope. if he's one of those guys. Like, you know, we listen to some of that EDM stuff. A lot of it is not done by the producer. That's done by when fire ass engineers coming in and chopping yeah. that shit afterwards. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Who's somebody Which that is kinda like production at the end of the day? Whose drums they're not yours, but whose drums do you have that you just like to fuck around with? <laughs> hey man, I would say uh, I got a Metro booming folder. Mm. But when I hear somebody, they got my tube snare. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell yeah. that they might have enhanced it and put a little boost or something on it. Uh, I go. I got an ill mind folder. Okay, shout uh, to ill mind. Bink sent me a nice folder. Wow, with some clean drums. Um, uh, Jake one. Yeah. Oh man. When I get into my soul shit, yeah, yeah I go to my Bink and Jake one folder. Shout out to Jake one. Yeah, and I um um who else? That's about it. Oh wait, were you in on that producers um group chat when uh when Just Blaze and Swizz were going at each other? No, I wasn't there. They had like a, a beat battle. Remember, yeah, a beat battle. And then they were like, all right. And it became this humongous thing where like. That's sad though, man. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Me and Manny Fresh did that shit before then. And people, it flew over everybody. <laughs> and it was dope. Yeah. yeah. Still, you could, I mean, like, I, it's you up, and I'm Manny Fresh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was with better than Timberland and. Um, and um, Swiss. And Swiss, man. I was. was Mm. <laughs> oh, hey man, I'm tell you, you can look at that one called yeah. BMI was behind that. Catherine Bruton and I had Tip and all everybody come. Man, listen, <laughs> yo, you would have shocked him with that Benzino and Birdman <laughs> yeah. song. Pull that out, yeah. <laughs> yo, Hell this no. this I found fascinating from that from that round table, the trap round table that Matter you guys fact, we did. We need to take that shit on tour too. I need to reach out to Manny Fred. That, that would not on a bag. Man. That would be yeah. awesome. That shit was dope. That would be awesome. Yeah. At the trap round table, you mentioned that like the way to stay relevant these days is to work with younger guys' drums. You're like, I feel like I can team up with someone else. Yeah, and like, like, you, you pass them... Yeah, 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 yeah. You pass yeah. them the, the, the instrumental, and then you're just like, you put your drums on it. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, just, just the music, yeah, with no drums, basically. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. um, and um, that's how... I'm, see, me and Matt, you know, telling me and Mike Will might end up having a few placements coming around soon, because we've collaborated on a few things. Mm. So I might just make a... Dope ass loop. Like I say, I put everything in it, but I, I I might put my drums in it, but I take my drums out because it's just you know the hi hat rolls. It's a few tricks that a lot of young cats doing now that I'm that I'm liking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Beats where I'd be like, you know what? Let me. I don't want my cadence on here. I want a whole another. Yeah, but now with the twenty year cycle, you could yeah. just like start doing two thousand two drums. 
Well, that's interesting, yeah, too, because yeah, yeah. when we sat down with, like, Arsonist, right? Then you see what he does when he does, you know, a Jim Jones album that sounds, like, very, very, very relevant to today. Right. And it's still, like, that heat maker sound, yeah. you know? Yeah. You reconnect with, with Kanye down here, mm-hmm. and you're working on Graduation, and you have a big impact on that album. Yes, sir. Did you, did you know what a big project that would be for him? Um, when we got in the middle of the album, I knew it. I started seeing it, man, and that's why I hung on to him. I was like, yo, he's like, yo, about to go to um, um, New York. I was like, shit, I'm coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing it in the mix. You yeah, know I mean? yeah, yeah. And, um, and thankfully that I did that because at the last minute, you know, Prince was like, yo. Like, yeah, yeah, please tell know? this story. So with Big Brother originally... um. I'm a fan of Prince, man. I've been a fan of Prince. Like, that's one of my favorites, man. If anybody asks me about producers slash, like, composers, like, Prince was that guy. By the way, everybody's a fan of Prince, so I'm not... Yeah. I'm just <laughs> saying, I'm not impressed yet. <laughs> yeah. See, you got a lot of people that's, that's in, in love with his music, but I was blown out back in the 80s for the fact that, yo, this guy's like a one-man band. I mean, you got Dr. Fink and your, you know... Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Band, but yeah. the fact that this man can play every instrument. Arrange know? it, yeah, yeah. yeah. And everything, so um, the song is Gonna Be Lonely it was always one of my favorite joints. Um, and when Kanye, one night, one night we was at uh, Doppler, and he was like, yo, Tom, I got this idea, man. He was like, yo. Listen to it. You snap at the feet. My big brother was big brother. Used to be again big brother. And I was like, okay. Look at I'm like, <laughs> say that shit one more time. It was like midnight, right? We was just about to end. And he was about to go back to his hotel. And I was about to go back home and get another seven hours and back, you know. I said, you know what? I said, say that hook one more time. And I tapped my feet. I was like, on some DJ shit. I was like, okay. I know that BPM. You know what I mean? So when I got home... No, before I left, I said, hey, man, I'm going to be about two hours late tomorrow. <laughs> but when I show up, I'm going to have a beat for that song. And I replayed that. I had, that Prince melody was in my head when he was saying it. And I don't know why, where it came from. And the track came out incredible. I, I blew everybody away. It was a few people from Def Jam had flew in. And having to hear that record, it was like, yo, that's going to be a big fucking record. I, I was like, oh, shit, I got like three on the album. <laughs> and I had one more on there with him and coming called I Done Did It All, but it uh, didn't make the album. I need to get that shit. Um, and, um, but you had already had the, the T-Pain. Yep, Good Life. Yep. Can't Tell Me Nothing. Oh. Like, then you got Big Brother. So, with And by the way, with Can't Tell Me Nothing, like the, the Jeezy ad-libs are just like come on, man. outstanding. Yeah, yeah. Man. And now if you if you listen to I Got Money, you'll be like, oh, shit, <laughs> yeah. same, man, yeah. same place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was it was really creative, man, the way how we freaked that song and turned it into a whole nother record. But um, yeah, man, when it came to that, um, by the time we got to Chunk King Studios, boom, you know, Big Brother, the last record to be mixed was really supposed to be, but Kanye just kept mixing stronger. He mixed stronger and oh good life. And like, he might have went through like six different engineers on each one of those. Yeah. Just, man, he could, man, the drums, man, I want to. I was like, Dre, uh, yeah, the shit is hitting. <laughs> but he was real particular about it. I respect He brought in, he brought, brought in Tim to redo yeah, that. Yeah. 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 And I was like, man, what the hell? <laughs> and, um, Did you like any of the other versions better than the final one? No. I, uh, we, uh, no. Was, Do you remember any of those? <laughs> I remember on the other version of Good Life, we had uh, John Legend. If you listen to Good Life, you might hear John go, whoa. Wow. And that's the only part that made it. But originally, it was a good life. <laughs> it was a lot of little. Yo, somewhere John Legend is seething. <laughs> yeah, man. So he had about three or four different people, you know, to do the hook on, you know, come up with the whole hook for Good Life. But T-Pain nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to T-Pain. Very talented brother, man. But with um, that Big Prince, Brother, yeah, yeah. so Prince hit us at the last minute and was like, yo, you know, instead of 50%, I want 100%. Because <laughs> they say something like Kanye didn't show up at one of his parties. Like, <laughs> felt some kind of way. He wanted, you know, parties at his big crib or whatnot. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I showed up at one of them. You know, come on, man, it's Toomp. You know, he don't know who the hell a Toomp is. And so uh, when he said that, uh, Ye was like, yo, you know, so Prince said it's cool, but... Uh, See, he won 100% of the publishing. And I'm like, nah, <laughs> shit, that ain't good. <laughs> I'm like, yo, this is how I eat, bro. Like, let me go back home. I said, I left that p- particular computer at home. All I came with was the files. So Def Jam flew me back to Atlanta. Well, real quick, you're looking at a deadline, though, right? Yeah. Like, 
you have no turnaround. Yeah, no turnaround. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they well, that night. When, well, wait, was there a chance that he would have just put out the Prince song if you didn't come up with like a good flip yourself? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So like that's like hanging over your head where it's just like I'm I'm losing to. out. Yeah. Oh man, like I'm this is come on, man. So are you thinking of ideas on that flight down? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Yeah. That limo waiting at the airport and I didn't even touch the crib. I didn't even take luggage. All I took was yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the keys to the studio. Jumped in the limo. They took me to the West End, pulled up, and I go go upstairs, turn on all my equipment. Just nobody know I'm in Atlanta at this point. Everybody, you know, you're still in New York. And I'm looking out at the camera, limo still sitting out there with the lights on, and I'm sitting there pacing through the room like, all right. Yeah, 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 da, da, da. So I kept all the inst- same instruments, but I had to move those notes around, man. And I finally locked in on one. It took about an hour and a half for me to come up with a whole another melody. I would say about a good 45. Mm. And um, shit, I grabbed that computer, put it in a bag, you know. So that was the only, I left empty handed, but came back, you know, with the computer. And by the time I get back to New York, you know, I got to sit back to the studio before everybody. So when Ye and them got in there, I done told the engineer, they'll sync it up with the vocals the same way the original is. You know, I don't want them to miss a beat. Matter of fact, all the instruments are the same. I just moved the melodies. So I heard it a few times. I was like, oh, my God, I know this shit. Is <laughs> you know what I mean? I done moved all the notes around. And when I messed play, man, when Ye and them got there, man, it blew everybody away. Wow. And they, everybody gave me my props like, yo, bro, that's some amazing shit. For you to go down there one day and come back with a whole nother melody that yeah. don't sound anything like, you know. <laughs> it, it gives was, the mood of. The yeah. mood, but yeah. yeah so. That's and crazy. I, at one point, I, wouldn't, I didn't want to talk about it because I heard, you know, the whole how Robin Thicke and them. Right, got, sure. You know, but it was like, oh, the feel, but no. I thought Marvin Gaye when I first heard that, mm. period. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Even though the bass line is different, but you could hear the elements. But on Big Brother, I just made sure that Prince couldn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, man. So I definitely uh, dodged that bullet. And you were there when, when uh, Kanye played it for, for Jay. Jay. Yeah. Because see what happened, <clears throat> excuse me, what was going around at Def Jam was like, hey, Ye got a song with, he talking about Jay-Z. So that was the only thing in the air. He got a song where he talking about Jay. Don't know if it's positive, don't know if it's negative. <laughs> yeah. Positive or negative. Yeah. So Jay shows up with Jay, with Jay Brown, you know, kind of like, hey, what y'all in here doing? <laughs> and I'm sitting in there, Jay come in, he had a fresh Jacob with the damn mm. baguette face Jacob. I'm like comp- complimenting the watch. And he was like, yo, man, he said, man, we going to have to hook up one day. I'm like, yeah, we got to. He's like, man, I want to hear this record. So Ye came in, and, you know, he was like, shit, man, you know, can we hear it? And so Ye was like, you know, turn it up, or whatever. You know, we already fell in love with the remix, so he's like, you know, let's play it again. <laughs> and when it was playing, man, I just sat there and caught the whole moment, man. Wow. Matter of fact, I think Ye got that shit on tape. Really? Ye, <laughs> you, have, you had this guy documenting that whole process of us making graduation man let's get that footage and wow netflix is a something man that man got footage of us doing this whole album man. i don't know what he's gonna do with it but this camera guy has at least i would say no less than 80 percent of the activity of of us working on that album i wish that they sent the camera guy down with you to you know yeah, get that, that laptop and then come back yeah, <laughs> that been yeah. Too. your relationship with jay continued a couple years later. Yeah, because I met Jay um, b- before with um, Big John introduced me to yeah. Jay a while back. Yeah. And uh, just reconnecting, man, it all made sense, man. So American Gangster is coming around. Yes, sir. How do you get word that Jay's, like, Hi. coming back from retirement? All right, once again, man, Mr. Platt. Yeah. Um, Big John hit me, man. It was funny because around this time, Jay was supposed to be retiring. <laughs> so, and the phone call was funny because he called me whispering. Hey, two, what's up? I'm like, what's up, man? What's happening? Yeah. You know, you hiding something? Like, no, man, Jay working on the album, man. You need to get up here as soon as possible. You know, ain't nobody gonna fly you in. Fuck it, man, you got money. You know, I, he figured, like, I'll cut you some checks now. Yeah. I know what you got. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah. I was like, all right, man, you know, we going to get them check in, you know. Um, at the Hudson Hotel, that's where I stayed. Uh, in New York. Yeah, yeah, nice Midtown. hotel room, yeah. super small, yeah. but it's just oh, dope. super small. It feels <laughs> just, like you're in like a ship. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, yeah, exactly. Like yeah. a cruise ship, yeah. but it's yeah. just a dope hotel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Is this an ad? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Trying to get sponsored by the Hudson Hotel. Mm-hmm. Well, sponsored by the Hudson Hotel. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I went on and came out of my pocket, man. But what's crazy is that particular track 
really, first, after that conversation, I went straight to the studio. I'm like, all right. So I flipped through the records. I was like, I, you know, I, I want to give him an original song, you know, me playing all my music, but I know at the end of the day, he may fall in love with a sample, especially mm-hmm. if I chop it up the right way. And um, The Love We Share, and I took that song, <sighs> chop it up. Um, What's crazy, though? I think Two Chains feel still feels play a circle. Yeah, yeah. I think he still feels a certain kind of way because when they made that song, I was like, "Chain, that shit dope." But man, y'all could have rapped that shit a little bit better, <laughs> you know. And for me, being like kind of a rapper, Chain was like, "Man, I think this shit dope too." Man, you ain't gonna be telling us how we say our shit. <laughs> me and Chain's cool, but I yeah. still feel that's something because I used to tell her, I say, "Man, that sample is so fucking cold," but I didn't know who it was from. <laughs> but I happened to be flipping through my records one day. It was like, oh shit! I actually had that time, all this time, <laughs> and you know, you can you know needle drop and just miss certain parts. Yeah, and man, you know, some years had went by. You know, they released the record and it really didn't do yeah so much. Right. I'm like, I'm gonna sample this shit again. So I put it in the ASR10. I had my Rolling Phantom sequencing with the MPC60, mm. and um, once again, our friend Benzino showed up at the studio. Our he just, friend, yeah, he just happened to be <laughs> in town, mm-hmm. but. Say hello, that track, that was another one of those beats of the day. I let that shit play like seven hours. Because after I put it together, and I go and take a break, go eat, come back, the bass line wasn't in it yet. I was like, okay, I hear a bass line now. And that's what I like to do. I give myself a break. After I make a track, I walk around. and mm-hmm. You know, you go to a certain part of the yeah. house, it feels different. You yeah. might hear another instrument by mistake and be like, oh, shit, mm-hmm. something from TV, but it was in the same key. Okay, I'm going to put that in here. So... As I started building on it, man, and it was just the track of the day. My assistant, everybody walked in was like, yo, that shit jamming. Mm. Everybody who came through the office, even the UPS man was like, yo, I like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and guess what I said? Man, I think I think Jay-Z. I'm about to go play some music for Jay-Z. And when Benzino happened to come in there, like, it's footage on YouTube right now. <laughs> DJ Toot makes Hello to the Bad Guy. It's about two, might be about 300,000 hits right now. And Benzino... I don't know what brought him in town, but he just happened to walk upstairs in the studio and heard this shit. He was like, man, that shit hard. <laughs> I said, yeah, man, I'm about to go see Jay-Z and, you know, play some music, man. I, I think I'm going to make this album. And shit, man, when I go up there, boom, we land in New York. It was funny, man. That's when I knew something was going on, man. That was the first time I got out of the cab in New York, in Manhattan. And I didn't never see this one person, but this motherfucker went by and said, God damn, man, that's DJ too. <laughs> and I could tell it was somebody from New York. I heard the accent. Yeah, I'm like, my boy, he's like, man, you tell me you don't think you the shit. I said, damn, man. I was like, I don't know who that was, but it was a car ride. I was like, that's fucking DJ too, man. How awesome is that? I was like, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. What a way to get there. Okay, welcome me back to yeah, the exactly. city. Exactly. And man, when I got to the studio, it was like, man, Jay had it all set up, man. About five different wines and cheese everywhere <laughs> and fruit. He had this fucking money clip with all these foreign bills, about 5000 and just jewelry just laying everywhere, just like a real- Casual. Yeah, yeah, casual. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was Normal shit. Subtle, him, yeah. yeah. You see Jay-Z, Guru, Jermaine Dupri, No ID, <laughs> uh, L Rock, and Usher. <laughs> <laughs> like, what yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, <laughs> and it's funny because I think they were talking about marriage when I got there, and that was right before Usher got married. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't last for so long, but yeah. well, he did get two kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, man. So we, we got to, to the point where, where Jay was like, hey, man, I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I, he said, man, I can't wait to hear what you got. I know you got that fire, but he's like, man, I've been listening to beats all day. Man, just play me your top three. And I'm like, oh, shit. Well, I already know what's in that top three. Wait, did that screw up your order? If, um, if he hadn't said that, what, what would you have played? Oh, I would have played about a good seven. I had about a good seven pushed to the side, like uh, four samples and three no samples. Mm. But do you do your your top three up front? Well, when he said that, that's <laughs> yeah, when I that's went when back you moved to everything. the one yeah, yeah. Yeah. of the day. Yeah. yeah, But I had that as number two. Mm. So I played him this first track because I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to get an original shit. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. Once again, let's get all my publishing. Yeah, exactly. So Shout to Prince. I played that, <laughs> yeah, right? So I played that, um, played the first one. He was just like, okay. Nice, nice. He's like, what else? And my manager came was like, man, give him that shit. Stop playing. <laughs> you know, I was like, all right, fuck it. I ain't going to make it to number three. I played that shit, man. And it was like, Ooh. He started moving around. He started. 
It fade, you know, then it played for a minute. JD was looking like, <laughs> you know, that little look, that little frown look. The yeah. It's like, ooh, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, he took his headphones off like, man, that shit jamming. Damn. And Jay Seal sitting there kind of bobbing. He's like, run it again. And he's going to run again. That's when I, I was sitting at the SSL. Mm -hmm. Guru hit me with an elbow. Yeah. <laughs> he's fucking with it. I'm telling you, I know him. He's fucking with it. Hard. I mean, we just playing, beat playing. And so... Jay see me mumbling. I'm like, he's like, what you saying over there? <laughs> what you saying over there? Yeah. <laughs> you saying something? I hear you. I'm like, no, man. <laughs> you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just mumbling, dog. But I was like, he heard me mumbling. He played, I think, like the third time. And he was like, shit, turn the mic on. Fuck. You hit the booth, man. Never came back out. And. That man had the bar, the verse, and everything, man. It was crazy. You ever seen something he, like that? Man, Tip. Yeah. T.I. Yeah, yeah, Tip did it too. But Jay, yeah, he went in there, man. No pen, no nothing. Um, It didn't take him any time. And J.D. went in there and did the hook. To say hello. That, that's J.D. saying that part. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah, a lot of folks don't know that. Yeah, yeah. J.D. saying that part. Yeah. What, did, what did Usher do? Did you... <laughs> Usher had done left. Yeah, he had left. He had left. Yeah, he just happened to be there and it left a little bit afterwards. Yeah, man, but uh, the magic was there. I wish I had a camera crew there to catch that. That's wild. Yeah, that was a magic moment, man. And me and Jay been all been hella cool ever since then. You know, he flew me out there. I hung out with him a few times afterwards. Um, shit. You know, we hung out, but I think at that time he was trying to really f see where Toomp could fit with this whole thing. Clearly pretty well. <laughs> like I say, that relationship is still cool. You know, we saw him, in, you know, we see him in Vegas, and that's when you know that shit is cool. Let's say, because I was standing with my home, but I forgot one of those Mayweather fights. And I see Jay from coming, and I was like, all right, yeah, damn, well, there is him. And it's crazy. He spoke to me first. That's when my homeboy was like, oh, shit is real. <laughs> yeah. He rode by you like, on I a... I had to say, hey, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what's up, playboy? I was like, oh, shit, what up? You yeah, know, I saw yeah. him coming. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Oh, you, you're here too? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's when my homeboy was like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, you you official, dog. Yeah, you official. Yeah, you know? it's one step away from him riding by you on a bike and just being like, "Yo, it's easy too." Yeah, <laughs> yo too. <laughs> I can't even do it without having pressure. Yeah. Oh shit! But yeah, man, it's and and that's one thing, man. It's, it's a relationship based industry. Once you really get into it, man, you could be the dope. You could be the guy with the dopest beats around here, man. And but if you don't just have that good heart and carry that great energy to come along with it, man, you. Oh you, yeah, that shit is like real. It'll be a short process. Man. No, for sure. Well, yeah. listen, to so We talking about 33 years right now, going on 34. And that's nothing to sneeze at, by the way. Like, yeah. that is, like, real humongous hits, yeah. you know? Like, from Lil John on to Jay-Z. And I think that, like, when you look at your whole discography, mm -hmm. you know, with all due respect to your dad, with all due respect to Don Clendendon, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, you, you are the real MVP, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, oh, congratulations dope. on that's everything. And thanks, that up no better, thanks so much for sitting down with us. Man, thank you. We appreciate you. Release the Birdman and Benzino song. <laughs> <laughs> Real hip hop heads want that. Yes, sir. Thanks, Doom. Let's go. Thank you, man. Right Thanks, everyone, for listening to this new episode of A Waste of Time with It's the Real Jeff. People want to find out more about us. I'm Eric with the curly hair. You're Jeff with the glasses. Together, we are It's the Real. No apostrophe, no spaces. If people want to find out more about this podcast, there's over 281 other episodes. It's called A Waste of Time with It's the Real. Go look it up. If people want to find out more about what's going on with us, Jeff, where can they go? You can always go to itsthereal.com, I-T-S-T-H-E-R-E-A-L.com. Go to itsthereal.com slash shop. Go shop for some stuff. Black go Friday to deals. Itsthereal.com. Get a newsletter. Go to itsthereal.com slash episodes and find some recommendations. There's a lot of stuff on our website. Go click on all of it. Every single thing. Also, you can find all of our old episodes and our new ones wherever you're listening to this podcast here right now. Spotify, Apple, Google Play, SoundCloud, and on and on and on. You didn't say CastBox. You Cast can go box. to CastBox. You can definitely go to CastBox. Shouts to CastBox. You can also find us on all social media platforms, but mm -hmm. there's only two of them that no. matter. Oh, I would say three. Oh, right. We've changed it up. It's Twitter at It's The Real. Instagram at It's The Real. And YouTube.com slash It's The Real. Yes, sir. Jeff, I said to the internet, hey, we want to grow this podcast. We want to let as many people into the circle as possible. I said, add us. And then add somebody else that you think should really be aware of us. Mm -hmm. And say, hey, listen to this podcast. And now, 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 now is the time where we shout all those people out. Jeff, 
Who are we shouting? I want to shout out Pragmatic. We want to shout out Anish Body 5. Shout out to both of you. I want to shout out the NAV fan account, the official <laughs> NAV Street Podcast. You know, shout out to the official <laughs> NAV uh, Hive. I don't know whether to take them seriously or not, but you know what? Shout out to all of you. If enough of the NAV Hive wants it, we will get NAV on this podcast and it will be the highest rated podcast you know, ever. Say something. Speak up and, and let us know. Cash Money Josh. Our guy from Michigan, USA. Yes, sir. He said that Russ, the rapper Russ, he should know about our podcast. Okay, Khalid said that he's been trying to tell Fuego Fantastic about this. John, I'm going to guess that Khalid is from Philly. All right. I'm going to guess that Fuego Fantastic should listen to our podcast. I, You know what? You're right. Okay, Ray, as in Okay, Ray Rodriguez. Yes. The other Ray Rodriguez. Who is still our Ray Rodriguez. That's right. Said Rebel Jazz Wonder should listen to our podcast. Shout out to you guys. Now, here's the thing. Yeah. Prathel, Prathel, mm-hmm. K. Rathel, yeah. said that Kevin Gates should listen to our podcast. Now, Kevin Gates has already been on. Kevin Gates' wife has already been on. Chat well, Drika. But it's, it's more that they should be aware of the podcast. But they right? are aware of the podcast. Right, right, right. right. But I'm just, yeah. All right. Cherry Poppins from the Officially Street Podcast. Shout out to all of them, Cherry and Jay. No, and- Jay and Sayer do not get shout outs right now. Only Cherry does because Cherry shouted out three people, Array of Sunshine, underscore SMDH321. That's shaking my damn head, 321. And 48 degrees with a Z. Yeah. Shout out to all of them. Shout out to all of them. Un- Hold on. Why? Another Ray Rodriguez has entered <laughs> the, the ring? circle. Yeah. This is. You know, I'm not into wrestling, but now I might be. If all three Ray Rodriguez get in. This is Raymond Rodriguez. What? Productive Ray 09. I, He's I, from Uptown, New York. I don't, I don't even know what to make of this anymore. Okay, so all Ray of our fans named Ray. Ray. Yeah, everybody's from original Ray, famous Ray. <laughs> so there's, uh, he said to shout out Gerald B24. Shout out to you. Shout out to Meezy Boulevard. Meezy Boulevard said to shout out Banks of Fly Luminati. Listen, I'm just going to shout out Carlton Banks. There you go. I want to shout out Born to American 18 from a tribe called Blessed. He said Lick My Kicks 02 deserves a shout out. They they should be shouted out right now. I also want to shout out Ice Lord Sir Drippington the Fourth. That's Rod Almighty. That's pretty great. Who said to shout out H Stacks Todd? Sorry, that name. <laughs> I wasn't excited, you know, I, I, I got the eight sacks part. Yeah. The Todd part <laughs> threw me off. Shout out to you. And Mike Lap 7. Mm-hmm. Um, Twitter Sucks 11. Great name. Great name. So that Sal's Touch would really appreciate our content. Great interviews. And Sal's Touch responded. Please go and check it out. All right. So hopefully Sal's Touch. It's work. Here's the shout out. Yes. Z Daisy said that J Wow, etc. J Will, etc. I don't know. Whatever. Who said that he's already aware he loves us? Oh, great. So shout out to him. I should get his name right. Yeah. J Will, etc. Denzel Dallas. DJ K Moore said to shout out fellow Raymond. Fellow Raymond. Hopefully it's not another Ray Rodriguez. <laughs> fellow Raymond and Tavito Thunder. And Tavito Thunder said he's been rocking with us since the skit days and. DJ K. Moore said, what the fuck, man? How about I just want this shout out? Act like you don't know for the cause. <laughs> shout out to all you guys. Um, Connor, Kanyemos, who is way too white for a name like that, <laughs> said Christina Oct. She listened to the hottest podcast you haven't heard about. Look him up. Wow. Our guy Nelson, this Lennis Nelson, said Barrington should add us to their rotation. Shout they out to Nelson. Gregarious said, LOL, yo, shout me out, fellas. Met y'all at the Gunner Stall exhibit down in Atlanta. I remember that. A couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We were on his show, and he said he would tag Love Christian. Shout out to you. Who is Christian, but I will say Christian. There you go. Jeff Jacobson, APS Bull, a.k.a. APSB. Mm -hmm. Shout out to them. All right. Shout out to Bloody Boral. Yeah. Who said to shout out Space Jam, my friend from Beyond, so now I have to put you on. I love that. Um, actually, everybody should just tell them. I agree. I'm still, wow, there's so many names. I'm going to just try and speak through these. Okay, sorry. Here we go. Shout of Adrenaline said to shout out to Sir Jules. Jay Gatsby said to shout out to Kalechi. Kalechi, who is very much aware of our podcast, but why not? Yeah. Layla65200359 said, please follow back. Definitely a bot. Yep. Bot or not. <laughs> bot or not. Bot or not. Gonna say bot. 
Uh, Source Monet said I can't add my Danish friends because nobody but our college students and journalists uses Twitter. I do recommend you to actual persons. Does that count? LOL. Best regards. Yes. Shout out to all of our Danes. Uh, I'm talking about Dane Tanacandro. I'm talking about Dane Cook. I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about the Great Dane. The Great Dane. That's a dog. Mm-hmm. Felix Mander is the Shadow Gallery World. Lovers Quarrel with Danny and TJ. Shed, uh, said shout out Cool G Mims. D Streets 815. Shout out Bontrell Duh. Motherfucking Lenny. Captain Oblivious. Shout out Jay Curry. TJ McCloy. That's N Hunter Thompson. Ideas by Harrison and Rob DeQuit. And then King Gage, who is so verified. Yes, sir. Says, shout it out. Keep Rock Entertainment. Which is his music company. Well, and they already know. So shout out to King Gage though, because he is verified. Listen, some people know about us, some people don't. Maybe more people know about us today. We appreciate all of you guys for rocking with us, whether you're new, old, or somewhere in the middle. We'll see you out on the road. As always, Jeff, not for real, for real. Sure, sure. See you guys next week. Rock the fuck